On day one, I spawned in as a land shark, the most awesome carnivore ever. I'm a real fish out of water. I've got nine hearts from the start because sharks are naturally born tough. And even though I'm tiny, I still have a bite. Looking around, I saw that my starting area was a desert. Or should I say, a sea of sand. But there aren't any other sea creatures anywhere. I wanted to go find some fish to eat, so I started swimming through the land in search of a nice meal. I eventually ran into another animal, but it was a tarantula. I heard that they were poisonous, so I didn't want to eat it, but it definitely wanted to eat me. That's no way to treat the top of a food chain. Wait, am I even at the top of a food chain? I swam away from the tarantula and soon discovered that I had the ability to dive inside of sand blocks to hide. I stayed under the desert surface until the tarantula got bored of looking for me and moved on. Then I popped back up out of the sand. I didn't expect other things would try to eat me today. While I was thinking, a coyote tried to snack on me too. It took off a few hearts, but this time I fought back. As I expected, my bite packed a real wallop. I celebrated my win by chowing down on some coyote meat. It wasn't that tasty, but at least it kept my hunger meter full. I'd look for something better to eat tomorrow. Until then, I'd take shelter inside of a sand dune. On day two, I resurfaced and went on to explore the desert in search of materials. At a nearby oasis, there was a grove of palm trees. I bit a few of them down and collected the wood they dropped. Ugh, that tasted gross. This is why I need tools in the first place. I got sick of biting trees pretty quickly, so I crafted a wooden axe to cut down enough of the remaining trees that I could make a complete set of wooden tools. While I was chopping, an octopus fell down from one of the trees. That was definitely the last place I expected an octopus to be. But then again, I was a land shark. What's the big idea? Can't a guy hide in a tree peacefully without getting knocked down? Sorry, buddy. I had no idea you were up there. What is an octopus doing in a tree anyway? It's not safe to wander out in the open out here. There are huge spiders everywhere, and they're looking for me. I thought spiders and octopuses got along. You have so much in common, like having eight limbs and... Huh, that's about it. We most certainly don't get along. And I suggest you find a place to hide too. The spiders out here are looking for sharks too. Sharks like you. So they were hunting me, but why? I've said enough. I need to find a new place to hide. Good luck. The octopus ran away, but not before dropping some healing potions. He must have been prepared for the worst. I felt a little bad about taking them, but if he hid well enough, he wouldn't be needing them. On day three, I decided to make the desert oasis into my base. I may have been able to swim on land, but having a source of drinking water around was never a bad idea. So I started chopping away at the rest of the palm trees to clear out an area where I could create my own personal retreat. Suddenly, a wild emu came bounding across the desert towards me. It was surprisingly fast and aggressive, but I was hungry, so that didn't stop me from taking a bite. The bird's attacks did a bunch of damage, so I was grateful for my higher starting health. Emus are trouble. If only I had heavy artillery. A couple bites later, and the emu was defeated. It also dropped a delicious golden drumstick. That looks yummy. I gobbled up the drumstick and felt myself begin to change. I became a bigger shark and my bite damage increased to be as strong as an iron sword. My already great number of hearts also increased to 17. I tried my ability to dive into land on the grass blocks and found that I could now dive into those too. I bet this works on all kinds of blocks now. Now I can explore other terrain safely. I spent the rest of the day constructing my resort. It was made out of the palms I chopped down earlier. I also added a room for myself. To protect myself from mobs, I decided to also include a fence that surrounded the entire resort. On days four to five, I went out to catch some rabbits to keep at the base for a steady food supply. I was a carnivore after all. I spotted some hanging around by some cacti, but a tarantula scared them away. Didn't the octopus say that those tarantulas were looking for me? I decided to get to the bottom of this and confront the spider directly. I hid and waited until he got close, and then I popped out of the ground to ambush him. I gave him one bite to show him I meant business, and then I gave him a piece of my mind. Hey, what do you want with us sea creatures anyway? The tarantula was startled by my ambush, but chuckled like he was remembering a secret. You'll find out soon enough, taste a shark. Sue Chef has promised us tarantulas, a bowl of her famous soup if we bring a land shark to her. Sue Chef? Who is that? You mean you don't know? 
She's only the fanciest and most renowned chef in the entire world. Her seafood cuisine is legendary, and very soon you are going to become a part of it. But I'm not a seafood. I'm a land shark. Then let's see if your flavor is the same. The tarantula struck back with a bite attack that left me poisoned. I was taking gradual damage to my hearts from the after effects. That's one lousy status condition. I need to finish this quickly. My enhanced bite did the trick. A couple of those were too much for the tarantula, and he was no more. That's what you get for poisoning me. Even after the fight was over, I was still affected by the lingering poison damage, but thankfully, I had enough hearts remaining to wait for it to wear off. The total was way more damage than I was expecting. I even had to use a couple of healing potions I got from the octopus. I was lucky I took that tarantula by surprise. If he had ambushed me instead, that could have been it. I returned to the base to wait for my heart meter to regenerate. On days 6 to 8, I searched a nearby forest for some materials to craft an antidote to tarantula poison. I had a feeling that yesterday wouldn't be my last tango with those spiders, and I wanted to be prepared for next time. I found a patch of some plants with healing properties which I could use to replenish my potions, but they wouldn't be able to neutralize the poison itself. I don't like it, but I think I need to capture a tarantula and study the poison. After that, I started flopping my way back over to the desert I'd made my home. I made my way across the dunes until I saw a tarantula, then I dove under the sand to hide. It didn't seem to notice me, so I waited for an opportunity to strike. Just then, another mob swooped out of the sky and attacked the tarantula. Whoa, what is that thing? It was a tarantula hawk, the tarantula's natural predator. It looked really tough, but it was distracted because it was fighting the tarantula. I emerged from the sand and took the tarantula hawk by surprise. The fight was won before it even began. Sharks are problem solvers. The tarantula hawk dropped something that would solve my poison problem, a rare poison resistance potion. I ate the whole thing in one bite. Hooray! With this, I won't take any extra damage from the tarantula venom. On days 9 to 10, I explored some nearby hills which I could mine for stone and other sturdy blocks that couldn't be found in the desert. I had fun trying out my dive ability on a bunch of different surfaces. While I was diving, I fell into an area where a lot of carrot plants were growing. I'm going to take these and replant them at my base. Those rabbits will have to eat something before I eat them. As I was pulling up carrots, I felt like someone was behind me and turned around. It was a girl! She was dressed as a chef and carrying a really big knife. I hoped it wasn't who I thought it was. <laughs> I, Su Chef, have found myself another shark. And I thought the only ingredients out here were carrots. Oh no! It's exactly who I thought it was! See ya! Late come back! Eh, hey, shucky shucky! Even though I was bigger, I was still just a fish. And a fish doesn't pick a fight with a chef. It never ends well. I swam as fast as I could until I lost her, and then I dove into the stone. For some reason, it was trickier this time. That's when I realized there was another shark trying to hide. Unlike me, this guy was a hammerhead shark. I bet building stuff is really easy for him. Boy, I'm how glad to meet you. I thought I was the only shark left. So did I. If you don't mind me asking, do you know where all the other sharks went? That sous chef you just saw has been rounding up our kind and turning us into soup for her restaurant. Soup? Oh no, I hate soup. And I'd hate being in it even more. She must be stopped. On days 11 to 12, my new hammerhead friend and I went back to my base. I made him his own room to make him feel right at home at my aquatic animals resort. Because stairs are really difficult to climb for finned boys like us, I decided to build in some pillars that we could use to swim up and down between levels. I was out getting more material when I was attacked by a giant snake. Let's hope my poison resistance works against snake venom too. The second it sunk its fangs into me, I was badly poisoned. My hearts were reducing quickly, so I ran back to base and started working on a new way to counter the venom. I knew that honey could help with curing poison, so I went and found a hive of desert bees, which I carefully transported to a safe location near my base. Now I have all the honey I need to avoid getting sick. I went back to fight the giant snake, and thanks to the honey and my healing potions, I was able to outlast it in a battle of bites. The snake dropped a rattle when it was defeated, and I had a feeling this was the key to building my poison resistance. I combined the rattle with some of the flowers and honey I had collected earlier and crafted an extra strength poison resistance potion. I drank it immediately. I'll bet I can become immune to all poisons if I keep making potions like these. On days 13 to 15, I was fast asleep in my shark bed when I remembered something from long ago, before I was even a baby land shark. It must have been a memory from a distant land shark ancestor. 
Back then, all of us land sharks swam through the desert together in a big group, or a shiver of sharks. There was always plenty to eat, and we always shared with each other. But one day, an army of tarantulas showed up and started capturing the sharks and their sticky spider webs. Uh -oh. They dragged my ancestors to a huge cooking pot where sous chef was waiting. Très bien. With this latest haul, I'll have shark fin soup to serve in my restaurant for years to come. She was talking to an even bigger spider next to her, who appeared to be calling the shots for the tarantulas. Eh, boss, when do we get some of the soup? You'll wait your turn. The other humans will get to sample my cooking first. Then maybe your spiders can have a chance. Uh, okay, whatever you say, boss. Now, let's get cooking. I woke up from that terrible nightmare before I saw all the land sharks go into the cooking pot. That would have been far too scary for me, no matter how tough of a shark I was. How horrible! Now I know why there are so few of us land sharks left in the world. If sous chef had an army of spiders at her command, maybe it would be better for Hammerhead and I to keep ourselves hidden instead of going after her. On days 16 to 19, I was searching around the base for Hammerhead and couldn't find him. Huh? Hey Hammerhead, where are you? Are we playing hide and seek? There was a note left on my crafting table, so I read it. Dear Zozo, I'm going hunting for some more food. If I don't come back before tomorrow, it probably means that I'm in trouble. Please come looking for me. You're the only friend I have in this world. So that's where he is. He's in trouble. It had been at least a day since the last time I saw him, so going to look for him would be a good idea. I decided to go find my way to this trouble place he mentioned. Sure enough, it turned out to be a town for bandits and outlaws to the west of the wow. desert. This place sure does look like trouble, but if my friend's here, I can't leave until I found him. Hey, Zozo! Hammerhead! You were easier to find than I thought. I said I was in trouble, and here I am. Let's go drink some milk at one of these saloons. I'm paying. We walked inside one of the saloons and saw that there was a fight breaking out between some bandits. It seemed like a group of them were ganging up on one guy. Hey, that's not fair! Leave him alone! <sighs> Sharks! The bandits screamed and ran away. I guess the sight of a big shark and his hammerhead friend was all it took to scare them off. Thanks for the help, fellow sharks. Huh? You're not a shark, you're a human. That's where you're wrong. I'm a cod shark, the slickest cod player in the West. Wow. Here, have this crown as thanks for saving me. As soon as I put on that crown, I grew up again and had 22 hearts. I also gained a pretty sweet dash attack. Thanks, card shark. Did you both come to trouble to hide from sous chef? I do know a rumor that you might want to hear. Are we sure we should trust this guy? Let's hear him out before we judge him. There's a legendary poisonous spice called the Chef Bane, which is said to ruin a cooking pot forever. If you sprinkled some of that stuff in her soup, she'd be forced to give up cooking. Then all the sharks would be safe. Wow, and you're really telling the truth? Trust me, kid, I know a thing or two. Even though it had seemed hopeless before, I now believed that there was a way to stop Sue Chef for good. All I had to do was find that Chef Bane. On days 20 to 22, Hammerhead and I returned to our base and found it under attack by those same bandits we scared away in trouble. This time though, there was a whole lot more of them and they were throwing dynamite. Uh -oh. This will teach you nasty sharks not to mess with us bandits. Oh yeah? Well we're gonna teach you nasty bandits not to mess with us sharks. Right Hammer? Right. Hammerhead and I worked together and took on the bandits as a team. We fought hard against the crooks, but our teamwork was too much for them, and we took them out. I was feeling so inspired by our teamwork that I had an idea. I should add a statue to the base. Things were coming along nicely, and I made some good progress on the first part. You can sort of see what it might be. I'd need to add some blue materials to get the statue's color palette just right, so I started mining to see if I could find any lapis. It would be a long way down, but I had to start somewhere. Once I gathered some stone, I decided it was time to upgrade my pickaxe. So I returned back to the base where I crafted a stone pickaxe, which would help me mine much more efficiently. And if you want to be more efficient in finding my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can find my channel easier. On days 23 to 26, Hammerhead and I teamed up again when our base was attacked by some super tough rock mobs. Uh oh, those look like straddlers. We were able to defeat them, but their skin was so tough that a bunch of our teeth fell out. Yo, yo, my teeth fell out. Don't panic, friend. They'll grow back. As for the ones that fell out, I decided to craft a bow and make the lost teeth into shark tooth arrows. Time to go spider hunting. 
I hid in the desert with my dive ability and waited for some tarantulas to pass by. And when they least expected it, I jumped out and sniped all of them before they could even react. Now I can gather all the venom they dropped and make myself even more resistant to poison. I went back to the base and did just that. I had just enough time to drink another poison resistance potion before I heard someone outside asking if anyone was home. I answered it and saw that there was a frilled shark at the door. Pardon me, is this arrow yours? I found it while I was hiding in the desert. Yes it is, thanks for returning it. Also, would you mind if I stayed here? I've got no home and there's a chef looking for me. Of course you can. That same chef is looking for my friend and I too. We'll be safer if we stick together. I then added another floor to the base to make sure that frilled shark felt right at home. Then I added some guard towers next to the fence to make spotting incoming enemies easier. On days 27 to 31, I went back to the town of Trouble so I could get some more information out of the card shark. He was willing to do it, but only for a price. I'll sell you this enchanted cookbook for some of your teeth. It'll tell you where you might find all sorts of ingredients, including the chef bane. Just my teeth? You've got a deal, mister. I gave him a full set of shark teeth. In exchange, he gave me the cookbook. Yes. I opened it up and saw that one of the first locations listed inside was the Great Pyramid of Pizza. It appeared to be some kind of restaurant for rich mummies. Wow. I had a good feeling about what I could find there, so I swam off to the part of the sand sea where it could be found. When I arrived, I saw that the entrance to the Great Pyramid was guarded by a crypt keeper. He was standing next to a sign that said, no sharks allowed. Yeah, that's not gonna stop me. I fired some arrows from a distance to draw him away from the door. Then I dove beneath the sand so he wouldn't know where I was. When the Crypt Keeper was looking around confused, I sprung up from the sand and gave him a big bite. He hit me before running back towards the door, but with my dash attack, I was able to bite him again and get inside the pyramid before he could stop me. He tried to follow me in, but I dove into the pyramid blocks and disappeared. He eventually gave up and returned to guarding the entrance. On days 32 to 35, I entered the grand dining hall where the mummies were being served their pizza. I used my diving ability to sneakily make my way around the room. I was hiding under a table when I saw a flying fish on a platter. It looked like he was being served so raw that he was still alive. I decided to ask him if he knew anything. Excuse me, do you know anything about a spice called Chef Bane? Yep, I've heard of it. Sure wish I had some of it right now so I wouldn't get eaten. Do you know where I can find some? Quiet down, the celebrity chef is about to make her appearance. Celebrity chef? Oh no! Sue Chef entered the dining hall and rang a bell to call everyone to attention. She had tarantula bodyguards with her. Attention diners, I am Sue Chef and I will be your celebrity chef this evening. Our special is... She looked down and saw me under the table! Shark soup! Get that rotten shark! Yikes! Sue Chef and her tarantulas ran towards me, so I used a dash attack to catch her off guard. She struck back with her cooking knife and sliced away most of my hearts. I would be sashimi if I took another hit like that, so I decided to improvise. Actually, tonight's special is tarantula salad! The mummies hungrily turned towards the tarantula bodyguards and started to attack them. No! No, it didn't! Stop this! I made a break for the exit. I hate to dine and dash, but this time, I had to. While I was on my way out, the flying fish flew after me. Wait, take me with you. I'm a carnivore too. That's good enough for me. Welcome to the team, Mr. Flying Fish. On days 36 to 39, I convinced the others to let the flying fish stay inside of our base with us. What do you say, fellow sharks? I thought this base was only for sharks who were hiding from the chef. He's a fish and we're sharks. Won't he be afraid of us? It's fine, he can eat the rabbits we've been farming and we have plenty for all of us. Once that was settled, I went to my room and consulted the enchanted cookbook that I got from the card shark in order to search for a new location to travel to in my search for Chef's Bane. Let's see here, the Great Pyramid of Pizza was a dead end. Oh, maybe I'll have better luck in the Marshmallow Swamp. Me and Hammerhead then proceeded to do some more work on the statue. The design was really starting to come together thanks to the lapis lazuli I had been mining. On days 40 to 43, I was on my way to the Marshmallow Swamp when I thought I saw another land shark nearby. Hello there, my name is Zozo. Do you need a place to hide? The mob that I thought was a shark turned around and I realized that he was actually a dolphin. A land dolphin. I'm good, thanks. I was just in the area looking for a heart of the sea. It's a kind of treasure usually found in the ocean, but for some reason, they can also be found on land in this place. It's pretty odd said the land dolphin to the land shark. 
point is that I did find a treasure chest with a heart of the sea inside, but there was a terrifying mantis shrimp guarding it, so I chickened out. They're all yours if you're brave enough. Thanks for the info, dolphin. Best of luck in your travels. I went to the place where the dolphin said he found the chest, and sure enough, the mantis shrimp was right there. Mantis shrimps were known for their lightning-fast attacks, so I knew that I had to rely on my toughness. I launched a few arrows before dashing into battle and biting away. The mantis shrimp knocked me back with a powerful strike, which did five hearts worth of damage, but that left him wide open. I drank a health potion and attacked him while he was recharging his attack. I did this a few more times before the mob finally fell. Alright, the heart of the sea is all mine. The door to the treasure chest opened up, and I rushed in. When I opened the treasure chest, there were some prismarine blocks inside, along with the heart of the sea. Once I collected them all, I used them to craft a new shield with some of my spare shark teeth. This shield of the deep could provide me with some defense, while also draining health from enemy mobs. On days 44 to 49, I made it to the Marshmallow Swamp. It definitely lived up to its name, as there were white marshmallow blocks floating all throughout it. I took a drink from the black water, and I realized that it was coffee. It gave me a temporary energy boost and increased the distance of my dash attack. There were a bunch of pink oozes jumping around the swamp, so I used them to test out both my enhanced dash and my shield of the deep. Once I was done cleaning up the slime squad, I heard a cry for help from the swamp. It was a platypus. Help! I wanted a drink of coffee, but I started sinking. Don't worry, I'll help you. I dove straight into the coffee and rescued the platypus before swimming both of us to shore. It was unusual for a land shark to be swimming in liquid, but I was very grateful that it all worked out. I, Platric Platypus, owe you my life, Sir Shark. Please, call me Zozo. I'm on a quest searching for a legendary spice called the Chef's Bane. Chef's Bane, hmm? You've come to the right place. You may not know this, but we platypi are experts in all things poison. Huh? You are? Absolutely. We're venomous creatures, too. Chef's Bane is the ultimate in poisonous ingredients, but you won't find any in this swamp. We'll need to go somewhere a lot more tropical. Follow me. With that, Platrick began to lead me out of the Marshmallow Swamp. I felt like I could trust him, so I decided to follow him. On days 50 to 53, Platrick and I arrived in a tropical region south of the Marshmallow Swamp. I checked the inside of the cookbook and saw that this area was called the Banana Pepper Beach and was known for growing the spiciest peppers ever known. Look alive, Sir Shark! We're on the lookout for a very special purple pepper, which is a key ingredient for Chef's Bane. Purple pepper, Platrick. I'll positively peek around every part of this place until I've pointed it out. Say it, don't spray it. We split up and searched for hints of the purple pepper. I ended up at the seashore. Wow, I just realized that I'm a shark who has never seen the ocean. I didn't have time to think about that because I noticed the Crypt Keeper from the Great Pyramid of Pizza running towards me. I guess I interrupted his vacation. He fought, but this time I had my shield. After a few hits, he realized his health was being drained and he ran away. He won't bother me again. A little later, Platrick and I reunited. It seemed like neither of us had had any luck finding the purple pepper. We'll keep trying, Sir Shark. In the meantime, have a potion of poison resistance. You'll want to be practically immune when we find it. I gulped down the potion and felt its effect make me even stronger against poison. On days 54 to 57, I returned to base to make some improvements. After swimming in the coffee swamp, I was eager to turn the oasis pool into a more tropical habitat. So I planted some banana trees to spice up the place. With the trees in place, I decided that the pool needed a diving board, so I added that along with some decorations to make it feel far more relaxing. Now I'll be a land shark and a water shark, master of both worlds. Hammerhead, Grilled, and Flying Fish all enjoyed using the diving board too. It seems like the base was becoming more than just a hideout. It was our home, and we were family. Eventually, Frill came over and approached me. Oh, hi Zozo. Hey there, Frilled. I noticed that you built the Shield of the Deep. It looks like it protects you really well, and I was hoping you could make me one too. I would, but I need to go find another Heart of the Sea. Maybe the cookbook knows where I can find one. I returned to my room to look at the cookbook, but it wouldn't reveal the locations of the Hearts of the Sea, but it would let me know where more Mantis Shrimp were. It was just a hunch, but I decided to give it a shot. I made my way over to a nearby cave where I figured another Mantis Shrimp might be hiding. I managed to find another chest like the last one, but this time it wasn't even guarded. Lucky me! I looked inside, and there was another Heart of the Sea! Soon after, I crafted another Shield of the Deep and gave it to Frill. 
Thank you, Zozo. Here, I have some serrated teeth I can spare. If you equip them, your bite attack will be able to drain health, just like the shield. Wow. That's an incredible upgrade. Thanks, Frilled. You rule. I put those chompers in, and I could already feel more awesome. Or should I say, Jossum? On days 58 to 62, I was making some really great improvements to the statue. It's really starting to come together. Can you tell what it is yet? Just then, I noticed that the base was swarmed by tarantulas. The tarantula leader that I saw in the flashback was there as well, so it looked like this was a planned invasion. But how did they know where we were? Huh? I thought to myself and remembered the cookbook. Card Shark, he must have sold us out. Hammerhead was right not to trust him. I ran towards the base to help the others defend it. Rilda and I both had shields of the deep and draining bites, so we could restore our health even as we faced getting swarmed by tarantulas. Oh no, this poison is taking a real toll on me. Right, I forgot. I'm the only one immune to poison. Go get some honey and cure your poison, Frilled. I'll go help Hammerhead. Hammerhead was the one I was the most worried about. He wasn't immune to poison either, and on top of that, he didn't even have a shield. Uh -oh. By the time I got to where he was, Hammerhead was being dragged away. Hammerhead! He called out to me while the spiders took him away. Make sure Card Shark pays for this. Don't worry, buddy. I will. And then we'll come save you. I was so afraid. There was nothing I could do. My best friend had just been kidnapped. On days 63 to 66, I returned to the Village of Trouble in order to get back at Card Shark for selling the rest of us out. I barged into the saloon where he usually hung out and saw him in the middle of a card game. He wouldn't be for long. Hey, Card Shark, I need to talk to you. Yeah, oh, well, if it isn't my old shark friend, I'm surprised to see you here and alive. You know why I'm here. You betrayed us. Now, now, remember the good times we had. I gave you that cookbook, remember? Your cookbook didn't help me at all. All it did was lead me to a bunch of dead ends. The purple peppers to make Chef's Bane weren't even where they were supposed to be. Of course they weren't. The Spider King already picked them all so that no more Chef's Bane could be made. It was part of his deal with Sue Chef, and this is part of my deal with her. He started throwing poker chips at me like arrows. I raised my shield and blocked them. Then I dashed in and gave the card shark a well-deserved bite. Good one, but I'm tougher than that. I am a shark, same as you. No, not anymore. He tried punching me, but I followed up with a harsh draining bite and defeated him. That was for Hammerhead. With Card Shark defeated, I left trouble and followed the many footprints that Tarantulas left in the sand. I hoped the Hammerhead was alright. I don't know what I'd do if he got turned into soup. On day 67 to 70, I tracked the Tarantulas to Cobweb Castle. I knew that Hammerhead could be here, as well as the purple pepper ingredients needed to make Chef's Bane. There were a whole lot of Tarantulas around, but I was a whole lot of Shark, and their poison wouldn't work on me. I fought my way to the throne room and found Hammerhead restrained in a web. Zozo, is that you? Don't worry, Hammerhead. I'm coming to help you. I moved closer to the throne when suddenly the King of Spiders dropped down from the ceiling. Two sharks for the price of one. The boss is going to be extra happy with me. The boss is never going to see you again, Spider King. Not unless you get out of our way. Big talk for a silly little shark. Let's go. I leaped at the King of Spiders and started biting his long, scary legs. Ow! Is this what being bitten feels like? I can't believe I've been doing this for years. The jagged shark teeth were too much for him. The Spider King ran off, leaving through a pathway. After that, I freed Hammerhead by shooting an arrow that destroyed the cobweb prison he was in. Hammerhead, let's check where the Spider King ran off to. Maybe the purple peppers are in there. Good idea, Zozo. From day 71 to day 74, Hammerhead and I entered the secret pathway that the Spider King had left through. On the inside, there was a creepy dungeon waiting for us. Whoa, this place looks so spooky, Zozo. I don't want to spend too long here. It'll be worth it if we can find the purple peppers and make the chef's main hammerhead. We were already too late. The purple peppers were gone, and there was a note from Sue Chef herself left in the empty dungeon. You underestimate me and my minions, Zozo. Did you really think I'd just leave the purple peppers here? Silly little shark. Only a chef of my caliber would know what to do with such an ingredient. I'd say I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's actually very funny to me. I'll see you at dinner, my dear. Me and Hammerhead were devastated. All this work and risk for nothing. It's okay, Zozo. At least you saved me. Let's go back to the base and figure out what to do next. 
From day 75 to day 78, I brought Hammerhead back to the base. I didn't want any more spiders to invade us at night, so I put up a new layer of defense. Hopefully a little fire will scare those creeps away. That's when Hammerhead approached me and gave me an enchanted book. Huh? What's this, Hammerhead? It's the sharpness enchantment, Zozo. It'll make your shark teeth extra sharp and dangerous. Wow. Oh, heck yeah, just what I need. I went inside and applied the enchantment book to my teeth. And I got those extra sharp teeth just in time, because the king of spiders who narrowly escaped in the cobweb castle was back, and he meant business. Time to end this once and for all. As the king of spiders ran in, I lunged forward and chomped him. In one bite, he was finished off, and that made me level up. I grew into a land great white with 25 hearts and the water speed ability, which made me twice as fast in water. Even though I'm a land shark, this might come in handy later. But that wasn't the only thing that the king of spiders dropped. He also had a note, which I picked up and read. It must have come straight from sous chef. Once Zozo has been destroyed, find the straddler in the forest. You know what to do. I was starting to get really sick of reading notes from sous chef, but at least it could be a valuable lead. From day 79 to day 84, I searched the forest for the straddler. If he was somehow connected to Sue Chef, he might be able to give me some information. Straddler! Straddler! Hello! That's when the straddler emerged out of the forest, looking irritated. Yeah, I'm the straddler. What's it to you? I've heard that you might have something to do with Sue Chef, the villain trying to turn me and all my fishy friends into soup. Do you know anything about that? Uh, yeah, of course I know about that. I've been trying to take her down for years. Maybe, uh, maybe we can team up. That sounds great. But, uh, first, you see that cave next to me? I need you to, uh, grab a secret weapon I left inside. I turned and saw a cave a few feet away. And there was a secret weapon inside? Perfect. I'll be right back, Straddler. I went into the deep, dark cave and was surprised to find inside was nothing. Could there have been some kind of mistake? I went back and saw the straddler standing in the mouth of the cave. Sorry, kid. I worked for sous chef all along. You really shouldn't be so trusty. He fired several arrows, and one of them even hit me. It was a tense moment, but I pulled out my own bow and fired back with even more accuracy. After a few arrows, the straddler was defeated, and I was alone in the cave. Whew, I really do need to be careful about who I can trust. On day 85 to day 89, I returned to the town of trouble to meet somebody I thought I'd never need to talk to again. The card shark who, after I'd beaten him, was taken and locked up in the town jail. Thankfully, he was allowed visitors. I flopped down into the jail to see him. Zozo, what the heck are you doing here? I didn't think you would ever want to see me again after what happened to your friends. I figured after everything that happened between us, you owe me some information I can actually use. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you nothing. How'd you like it if I bit through the door of this cell and asked you a little closer? Okay, okay. What do you want to know? Where can I find and defeat Su Chef? <laughs> find is one thought. Defeat is another. You can find her in her kitchen on the Mushroom Island. But I warn you, Zozo, if you go to that island, you ain't coming back. We'll see about that. This shark is never going into anybody's soup. And with that, I left the jail. There was no time to waste. From days 90 to 94, I worked on some new items and upgrades to my base. I can't take on Sue Chef without the best of the best of the best. I added a bunch of new upgrades to increase the effectiveness of my bow. Power enchantment that increases damage and the punch enchantment, which increased the knockback power of my arrows. Hope you like your food spicy, Sue Chef. And also, to give myself a little extra boost, I made myself a few potions. A potion of healing, a potion of regeneration, and a potion of swiftness. And sharks aren't exactly fast, but this should offset that. I'm sure to win now. On day 95 to day 97, I finished the statue, a giant blue land shark, just like me. I'm very happy about how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It made me realize something. In all of my time here, I'd only seen a handful of other sharks. There used to be so many land sharks out there, but now, because of people like Sue Chef, they were all gone. I couldn't let Su Chef wipe us out. I needed to protect the land shark legacy and give our people a future. I'm gonna take you down, Su Chef. You've made your last shark soup. On day 98, it was time to prepare for the final battle. I gathered all my friends together, the hammerhead shark, the frilled shark, and the flying fish. Guys, this is it. I'm gonna fight for the freedom of sharks and all fish. 
If I don't come back, then find Sue Chef on the Mushroom Island and defeat her for me. That's when Hammerhead Shark, my oldest friend, stepped forward. Wait up, Zozo. I'm not going to let you go alone. Hammerhead, it's dangerous. She's going to try and turn us to Sue. That's exactly why I can't let you go alone. Let's go together and finally finish this thing. On day 99, Hammerhead Shark and I swam across the ocean until we reached the Mushroom Island. Let's go, Hammerhead. No time to waste. The island was guarded by particularly creepy creatures, mutant spider pigs. They spotted us and started to crawl towards us. What are we going to do, Zozo? Don't worry, Hammerhead. I have a special weapon. I pulled out my fully upgraded bow and started firing, knocking back the mutant spider pigs. Look at that. I'm fighting you without even touching you. Ha! Zozo, over here. I found some prisoners. I went to where Hammerhead was and saw that he had found a cage full of blobfish that Sue Chef had captured. You help them get back to the base, Hammerhead. I'm going to defeat Sue Chef once and for all. Good luck, Zozo. I believe in you. On day 100, I continued alone across the Mushroom Island, looking for Sue Chef and her evil lair. Along the way, even more mutant spider pigs started rushing towards me. I used my upgraded bow to quickly dispatch them and clear the way. Will you guys get out of the way? I'm looking for your boss. After defeating the last few mutant spider pigs, I saw a secret chest on the island with a sign next to it saying, Secret Ingredients. Hey, that sounds useful. I searched through the chest until I found a bottle labeled Potion of Evolution. Wow. I immediately added it to my inventory and kept moving. Soon enough, I found Sue Chef's true lair. She mined a huge crater into the ground and filled it with lava. Wow. It was the ultimate soup boiling pot, and Sue Chef was there, throwing ingredients in. Welcome, Zozo. You're just in time. I've been working on the ultimate soup, but it's been missing something. I think it could really use a little shark to really make it pack a punch. Oh, I'm here to pack a punch, Sue Chef, but it won't be in your soup. Sue Chef started to laugh at me, and as she laughed, she grew bigger and more powerful. She also equipped a huge diamond sword. This must have been her final form. Uh -oh. Big talk, but nothing to back it up. You don't even have the chef's bane. How could you possibly stop me? Things have changed, Sue Chef. I used to want the chef's bane. Now, I am the chef's bane. I remembered my friends and got a surge of power and started to grow and change. I wasn't a land shark anymore. I was Land Megalodon, the biggest and most powerful shark in history, with 30 hearts. You wanted shark? I'll give you more shark than you can handle. I lunged at her. She tried to hit me with her diamond sword, but her sword was nothing compared to my razor-sharp Megalodon teeth. Ouch! I was meant to eat you! You're not meant to eat me! She tried to hit me, but I kept lunging forward and biting her. Sue Chef was stumbling backwards, losing her balance. You look a little tense, Sue Chef. Why not take a dip and cool off? With one more push from me, Sue Chef fell backwards and landed in her own soup. She was finally finished! I threw the potion of evolution into the fiery pit, which caused it to level up and change into obsidian. Wow. Now no shark will ever be cooked here again. With Sue Chef gone, I returned back to my base, where the hammerhead shark, the frilled shark, the flying fish, and the blobfish were waiting for me. Wanna head out for a meal to celebrate our victory? Sure, anything but soup. On day one, I spawned in as a cute and not so ugly little duckling. I'm so tiny, I've only got two hearts. I guess that checks out. I'm not strong, I'm just a square of fluff. At least I can fly. Nope, I can't fly yet, but I can swim. And check out my duck family. I've got a mama duck and a bunch of duckling siblings. They were all swimming in a pond. Hey guys, wait up for me. Wow, this sure is peaceful. Just paddling along. My siblings and I had a great time splashing around together and following mother duck around. We didn't even run into any trouble. As the sun set that night, we made a little shelter and all huddled together to go to sleep. Maybe this will be an easy 100 days of survival. Hey, a duck can dream. On day two, we were all awoken by the sound of loud barking. I looked around and saw we were surrounded by some mean looking dogs. Our little duck shelter was super weak. The dogs got right in and started attacking us. Oh no, I would have to be brave. Feel the wrath of my mighty beak. I tried to fight back, but I instantly realized that a little duck stands no chance against big mean dogs. We would have to make a run for it. My duck family and I fled away, waddling as fast as our little webbed feet could take us. But it was no use. The dogs ended up surrounding us again. I have to do something. Whoa! Next thing I knew, I was tumbling fast down a steep hill. Ouch! Oof! You could definitely say I was on a roll. I fell with a splash into some water at the end of the hill. 
I was nowhere near my family anymore. They were all still far above me. My family was being kidnapped. I did what I could to find my way back in time to save them, but by the time I arrived, everyone was gone. Oh, no. This is not good. What'll I do without them? I made my way back to where I first saw my family. I wish I was playing with the other ducklings right now. I don't want to be all alone. If I wanted to survive long enough to find out what happened to them, I'd have to find some place to hide. I noticed a little hole along the edge of the pond and ducked into it. No pun intended. I waited out the night there and decided to track down my duck family in the morning. On day three, I woke up without any issues from the other predators. I hopped out of the hole in hopes of seeing that my family had returned. But to my great disappointment, there were no signs of other ducks around. With nothing else to do, I went around and started collecting and mining materials to build a better shelter. I didn't want to be out in the open if the dogs returned. I'll have to be smarter than the average bird brain when I build this shelter. I need to keep the big, bad dogs out. Eventually, I had a good amount of supplies and started crafting my craft table, wood tools, and then began the beginnings of my little house by the shore of the pond. Location, location, location. This house had a great view. It was the perfect spot for a duck like me. On days four to five, I still needed lots more materials for my base. I had to waddle off a little farther away from the pond to get more materials. Suddenly, I saw a peacock in the distance. I came closer and asked the peacock if I could get some wood. I explained my situation to him. The bird gasped. My family was kidnapped by a group of dogs, too. No way! What are the chances of that happening? Do you know where our families were taken? The bird wasn't sure, but explained that they were being kept somewhere so their feathers could be harvested over and over. That's awful, ruining lives just for some measly feathers. We heard a rustling and out jumped an ocelot. The peacock was instantly spooked and ran away. I wish I could get away. But that wasn't an option for me. I would have to be tough. I was only a tiny duck, but I wanted to find my family. I couldn't let this cat ruin my chances to do that. I was able to dodge a lot of the attacks the cat threw at me. Then, without too much trouble, I defeated that rascally cat. You were a bad putty tat. Once the cat was gone, I could feel myself changing. I was leveling up. I wasn't a little duckling anymore. I was a little bit bigger duckling. I had extra hearts and let's test out these wings. Hmm, I can fly a little bit. I'm a flying talking ducky now. I could only fly a short distance, but it would give me some much needed advantages. This, this was neat. On day six to eight, I returned back to my base and started crafting some stone tools. As I worked, I started hearing something outside. I carefully went and looked around. I was hoping to see my duck family, but instead I saw one of those awful dogs sniffing around my house. I wasn't going to let him get away with his evil deeds. He would be sorry for stealing my family. Hey, you, dog, who are you? And what have you done with my family? The dog refused to give any information. Instead, it lurched at me. The dog probably thought that this would be an easy fight, but this time I had my stone tools. I was ready to take him down, and that's just what I did. Once the dog was gone, I saw that it dropped a note. I picked it up and read it. The note was in order for the dog to find the duck that got away and to bring me back to the farm located in the Badlands. Aha, I will quack this case soon enough. Now I knew they were somewhere in the Badlands. Having that dog come after me proved to be a very helpful thing after all. On days nine to 10, I did not want to waste any time. I traveled towards the Badlands. Having my new ability to briefly fly came in handy. Whenever I'd come across ravines or other obstacles, I could flop my way right across them. Up, up, and away! By and by, I made it to the Badlands with no harm done. I spotted the farm, but it didn't look so much like a farm. It looked more like a prison. There were so many sad animals fenced in and caged up. So many birds in cages. That's so mean. Birds need to be free to flap and fly. They shouldn't be cooped up. I noticed all the depressed animals, but I didn't notice the big wolf guard staring me down until I was close to her. I assumed she would yell at me, but instead, she lowered her voice. You shouldn't be here. I would run far away from here if I were you. Wait, huh? you're not going to try and capture me? Not if I don't have to. I'm not exactly happy with what is happening here. I'd leave myself, but things are complicated. Who is in charge here? I shouldn't be telling you any of this, but if you must know, he is a powerful monster. A big, big, big dog. Fearsome and powerful. No one dares go against him or you'll be destroyed. Just then, another guard came out of nowhere and attacked me. You need to go to obedience school. Didn't anyone tell you not to bite? I tried to fight back, but the guard was too strong. There's only one way out of this. I would have to run. I didn't like the idea of running away from my family, but I knew if I wanted to help them, I'd have to live to fight another day. I took my chance, flapping my wings. I dashed away from the farm. On days 11 to 12, I ran away. I decided to take a rest in a tree. My wings and legs were getting so tired. I was new to this flying thing. I was getting ready to rest my eyes when I heard hooting. At first, I wasn't sure where the voice was coming from, but then I noticed an old owl on a branch. Who, who are you, young duck? Oh, I didn't see you there. Pardon me. I'm Zozo. What's your name? Who, I am Wayma the Wise. Who are you running away from? I'm running from these dogs that are rounding up a lot of birds and other animals. They are throwing them in cages. They took my whole family. You should be very careful. You don't want to end up in a cage. 
Who? I know of who you speak. For this happened when I was a young owl, not much bigger than yourself. Animals were being taken from their homes and forced to do the bidding of their captors. We fought together and eventually defeated our foe. I'm much too old to fight again, but I can see the world is in need of a hero. Perhaps that hero is you, Zozo. Who? Me? I don't know about that. I wasn't so sure that I could save the day. I couldn't even defeat one of the guards, but I knew I would do whatever I could to help my family escape. I bid the old owl goodbye and thanked him for his wisdom. I headed back to my base. I needed to regroup and figure out a plan. On days 13 to 15, I woke and realized what time it was. Upgrade time! I wasn't strong enough yet to go up against these dogs in the Badlands, but I could make my base more secure. After all, they could be sending more dogs out to grab me at any minute. So I started improving my little lakeside home. Man, I can't believe Big Dog is capturing all these animals. It's so messed up. If I didn't figure out something quick, more animals would be in trouble. I finished my upgrades and really wished my duck family could see the home I was building for them. I think they would get a quack out of it. Thinking of them made me get an idea. I could totally have them with me, just in a different way. A statue way. You know what time it is, right? Statue making time! I began building and thought about how the ducks taught me a lot. Life should be spent with the ones you love and being free as a bird. I liked the way it was coming along. The statue family would keep me company until I rescued my real family. I was really getting into building the statue when I heard a bird chirping excitedly. It was the peacock that had run away from the wild ocelot. Well, bless my soul, it's you. Good to see you're still alive after that run-in with the cat. Yeah, me too. My name is Zozo, by the way. I'm Taffy. I noticed your nice lake house. Did you build that all on your own? Yep, now I'm working on a statue of my duck family that got taken away. It's hard living on your own, isn't it? I miss my family too. Say, you could live here with me if you want. We can keep each other safe. I am working on a plan to rescue our families. Taffy thought that sounded great. As long as I won't be too much of a burden. I went inside and I made sure that she had everything a bird could need. On days 16 to 19, I decided it was past time I got around to making some iron weapons. I wandered around the area, and after a bit of flying around, I spotted something interesting. It was a mine shaft. Bingo! I entered the mine and followed the maze tracks to some iron. Of course, it wasn't a walk in the park down in the mines. It was a walk in the dark. I met some zombies and skeletons down there that were interested in ending my life. Back off, I've got a sword and I know how to use it. I started swinging my sword at them and had a couple close calls, but I knocked them out pretty quickly. It was good to see I was learning how to hold my own. Still, I didn't care to run into any more creatures, so after I had enough iron, I booked it out of the mine as fast as I could. Back at the house, I readied my supplies and got to work, crafting my stronger weapons and armor with my crafting table. These will give me the edge I need to go up against those tough guards. On days 20 to 22, it was time to release the Quacken. I told Taffy to keep a bird's eye on the base while I returned back to the Badlands. This time, I would be ready. Those guards won't see me coming. Because this time, I wasn't going through the door. I was flying overhead. I know what you're thinking. I wasn't the most accomplished flyer, but I could fly better than those dogs could. It was worth a try. As I approached the walls of the farm, I took a running start and launched into the air. I'm like a flying ninja. Yay! There's a duck flying over our walls, into the farm. Now that's what you call a bird brain. Well, I guess I wasn't as stealthy as I hoped I was. I landed near the guards. Wait a second, it's that troublesome duck that keeps getting away from us. Get him! I jumped into the air, dodging attacks. Toucan, play at this game, on guard. I got out my weapons and started handing out damage. I couldn't lie, it was a bit daunting. They would get a hit or a bite, but with my armor protecting me, they were toast after a few hits. What a rough day for you dogs, getting your tails handed to you by a little duck like me. Finally, I had finished the guards off. I didn't waste any time searching for my family. I started running all around the ground searching for my family. I wanted to save all the other animals I saw, and I promised myself I would help them. But first, I had to locate my family. But they weren't in any of the cages or fences. Where are they? What is all this squawking and hollering? A chill ran down my spine. A giant creature stomped loudly out of the foreboding base. It was enormous. A big dog. I was terrified. Guards, why are you letting some pipsqueak cause such a ruckus, eh? Looks like somebody ought to teach this quacker a lesson. Big dog let out a pss, pss, pss. Out came a tiger. He charged at me. I tried to fly away, but it was no use. This big cat could jump. Hi! I used my weapons, and his attacks broke my armor quickly. I was exposed, and I was losing hearts fast. Hiya! A big wolf came bounding into the fight. It was the nice guard. She told the tiger to back off. Let's get out of here. We ran for it. Who knew how many more guards would come running after us? Or worse, big dog. Shockingly, the tiger didn't chase after us. After a while, we felt safe enough to stop running. You saved my life. 
I couldn't stand by any longer, and you're really brave. You might have what it takes to take down the farm. I failed to save my family for a second time. I think it's pretty obvious I can't do that. The wolf assured me that she believed in me. It was nice, but I still felt awful that I hadn't saved them yet. Where are you going to go now? Honestly, I didn't think that far ahead. I just couldn't let you become catnip. I have a base I'm building with another bird friend. Why don't you come live there until you figure things out? I'd be very grateful to stay with you both. I led the way back to the lake house. By the way, I'm Zozo. What do I call you? Awoo is the name. Mm, seems fitting. On days 23 to 26, we got back to the base. Taffy greeted us, and I introduced Awoo to Taffy. I'll need to do some upgrades and add a room for you, Awoo. It shouldn't take too long. I made sure to make the room nice and spacious for Awoo. It was the best room in the house. I noticed I hadn't added to my statue in a while, so I got to work on that too. You know, I think I'll add my friends to this piece. I'd like to honor all my good friends and family. Just then, Awoo came trotting up. Wow, this is looking great. Everyone watching should subscribe so that they can see all the other cool stuff you'll make. What do you mean, everyone who's watching? It's just us here. Uh, they know who they are. On days 27 to 31, I went out exploring to find new resources. I was pecking around when I heard someone who sounded very upset. I followed the voice and came upon a raccoon. Hello, is everyone okay? No, everything is not okay. I've been kicked out of my house by a big old monster. He thinks he can just push me out of my home because he's mean and can destroy me super fast. Huh, nobody ain't got no respect these days. I tried to calm the raccoon down and asked him to show me to his house. He walked away and showed me to his home. I approached the door and sure enough, there was a monster cooped up inside. The monster growled and told me to get lost before I became its next meal. Listen, this isn't your home. You really shouldn't take things that aren't- Are you still talking? Be gone! Be gone or be eaten! Silly food talking back to a predator such as I? If I weren't so cozy in here and already eaten three meals today, why I'd gobble you up in one bite! Scram, pests! It was clear this rude guy wasn't going to listen to anything I had to say. I'd have to teach this guy some manners, and I had an idea. On days 32 to 35, I started digging near the raccoon's house. What we had here was a reverse three little pig situation. In this scenario, the big bad wolf is inside the house and I need to blow the house down. And to do that, I started to dig a tunnel deep down under the house until I found some lava pools. Wow. This was one pool I did not want to get my feathers wet in. Now that I knew where the lava was, I headed back out of the tunnel. The next part of my plan was to find some creepers. As I came out of the hole, I quickly found some. I'm just here for your gunpowder. Don't mind me. Now that I had gunpowder, I just needed one more thing. Sand. I headed to the riverbed and gathered a bunch up. With the gunpowder and sand, I crafted some TNT. I think you might know where I'm going with this. I returned to the tunnel that I dug under the raccoon's house and ran down to the lava pools. I carefully set the TNT next to the lava and began setting a fuse up and out of the tunnel. Match, set, light. Everything was going according to plan. On days 36 to 39, I waddled up to the front door and called out to the monster. The door opened to reveal the grouchy foe. Hello again. I thought I'd let you know that you have a limited time offer to leave this house before I huff and puff and blow this house down. And how do you suppose to do such a thing? Easy. I have a brick of TNT nearby and a fuse that's ready for me to light. TNT? It's dynamite and I'll win this fight. I would slither on out of here if I were you. This house isn't worth your life. You talk too much, duck. I yield to no one. Be gone. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. I activated the fuse and down the signal went into the tunnel. I took cover. There was a giant explosion and the floor of the house gave way, sending the monster to his fiery grave. Yes, my plan worked. The raccoon was nearby and watched the whole thing. Was your plan to destroy my entire house? The raccoon was not exactly happy, despite the fact that the monster was gone. I felt bad. Maybe I had been a little intense with my plan. Now how am I going to afford to rebuild my house? Put it on my bill. That was a joke. I don't actually have any money, but what I do have is a really big lake house that would totally fit you. I have other friends staying there too. Why don't you come stay there with us? The raccoon grumbled but agreed. He was still a little sore about his house being blown to smithereens. I showed him the way to the lake house and we made our way there. On days 40 to 43, we arrived back to the lake house. The raccoon sure was a grouchy fellow, but something about him was endearing too, like an angry little elf. They are just adorable when they get mad. You can't help but smile when they yell at you. I showed the raccoon around and created him a raccoon-tastic space for his home. I went over to my statue creations. We had my duck family and taffy. I loved how it was looking. It was only right to build a statue of the raccoon too. I started building the raccoon statue. Looking at all these family and friends in the statues made me think about another creature that had been so nice to me, Waymar the wise owl. I didn't want anything to happen to him. Maybe I'll go visit him and see if he would like to stay at the house. We are safer in numbers. I don't want him getting captured. 
On days 44 to 49, I returned to the tree where the owl lived. I found him sitting under the tree, but he didn't look so good. Huh? Mr. Waymar, are you okay? Who? Who? Ah, Zozo, my dear boy. <coughs> I was worried you might have been one of the henchmen. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little under the weather. It's hard to get food and such these days. I can't fly, you see. I'm kind of stuck in this tree. That was not good. I couldn't stand by and let Waymar suffer. I told Waymar that I wanted him to come live at the house with us and we would help take care of him. He was so grateful but didn't know how he would get there. I'll figure out something. I'll find a way to carry you there. I immediately thought of the mine carts in the mines. Oh, those would work great. I just needed a way to push it along. I headed back to the mine and started collecting the tracks for the cart. I would make a track from the owl's tree to the base. That should be enough. I took everything back to the owl and laid some tracks down and rebuilt the cart. Climb aboard. Once he was in, I pushed Waymar along in the cart, picking up the tracks as I went along and setting them ahead until I made it all the way back to the lake house. I was excited to build him a room in the house. My little misfit family was growing so much. Waymar was super grateful for the help. He couldn't believe he had us to care for him now. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. I'm an owl. On days 50 to 53, I decided to go deeper in the mine to find some diamonds. I hadn't seen diamonds yet, but I was certain I'd run into some if I went a little farther in. As I went deeper, I ran into a big stinky toad. I smell something most foul, and it's not me. Aha! Care for a slice of my sword? I swung my sword while the toad tried hitting me with his tongue. He was no match for me though, and I quickly took him out. I went a little farther and ran into some tarantulas too. Ooh, these guys creep me out. I made quick work of them, swinging my sword as hard as I could. They too were soon gone. That's when at long last, I had found the diamonds. I mined them up as quickly as I could and then headed back home to make them into things. I made a strong pair of armor and some super strong weapons. As they say, diamond weapons hurt forever. I definitely felt I had a better chance of kicking bad guy booty with these upgrades. I just needed to figure out where my family was being held. As I was crafting, one of my friends told me Waymar needed to see me, so I went to his room. Hey, Waymar the Wise, you wanted to see me? Oh, oh, Zozo, I have loved being here. I feel so much happier. Oh, <coughs> I hate to seem ungrateful for asking you anything, so you know what? Never mind, it was silly anyways. No, please, I want to help. I'm happy to do anything, anything at all. Well, okay, if you insist, I have the most overwhelming craving for a tropical fish. I loved eating it when I was younger. My siblings and I would devour them when we were in the nest together. <coughs> oh, how I miss those days. Sure, that's no trouble at all. I'll go right away. Waymar was so excited to hear I would help him. I started on my quest immediately. On days 54 to 57, I finally reached the water. There was a perfect spot for catching tropical fish. Now if I was a gorilla or hoglin, I might have trouble getting this fish, but I was a duck, so I was in luck. I paddled out into the water and dove after the fish. Okay, this is a little trickier than I thought. I spotted a school of fish and started swinging my sword. Eventually I got one. I kept swinging until I had gotten a few more. Well, now to simply swim back to the shore with no problem. Ah! Somebody bit my tail feathers! It was a shark! I was under attack! Actually, I was more over attack as the shark was below me. Oh, you like picking on smaller fish, do ya? Wait a second, don't you eat smaller fish too? Well, yeah, but that one was supposed to be mine. Now scram! I fought the shark. It was tough, but eventually I won thanks to my upgrades. Oh, check me out! I'm growing! I'm a much bigger duck now! I had leveled up! Finally! Hey, maybe I can fly now! I thought a happy thought, took off running, and started flapping my wings. I zoomed into the air. This was amazing. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. On days 58 to 62, I arrived back in the base with the fish. As I climbed into the base, I saw that Waymar was even worse off. Oh no, Waymar, you don't look so good. Here, I brought you your favorite fish. This should help. <coughs> Thank you, Sozo. I don't have the energy to eat it just yet. Let me just put it here. I remember when Mother would return home with the fish back in 1932, just as you just did. <coughs> she liked them lightly pan-fried <coughs> and put a dollop of cranberry sauce on, on, on the side. Waymar? Waymar? Waymar suddenly passed away with a smile on his face. I wondered if I had gotten him the fish sooner if I would have saved him. But I was also glad he took his final breath, knowing he was cared for and not alone. He was going to be very missed. On days 63 to 66, I was moping around the base. I felt so sad, and that was okay. I just needed to let out my feelings and be upset. I went over to the statues and had a good sob while I added another one to the bunch. I wanted to honor Waymar's memory by adding him to the group. 
The statue made me feel better, and I could smile again. There was my wise friend Waymar staring back at me. This place was becoming a whole museum full of statues. It was beautiful. On day 67 to 70, Awu came up to tell me that they had found something. It's a note from Waymar. You're going to want to read this. I took the note and read it. Zozo, check out the old fort east of here. Your family might be there. And remember, things aren't always what they seem. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Believe in yourself and your plans. What was that supposed to mean? It was a nice sentiment, but I feel like it was some kind of coded message. I'd try to remember that. Well, Awu, looks like I need to follow these clues. Can you help keep watch over the lake house while I'm gone? Awu was up for the task. In the morning, I would take my leave. On day 71 to 74, I went in search of the hidden prison in the tundra. As I traveled across the snowy forest, I spied a fort hiding in the mountains. Is that it? I saw that the fort was active and that there were guards that looked just like the ones from the farm. They were carrying large shipments of feathers out of the fort. This place must be a prison where the other ducks and birds are being held captive. They are harvesting their feathers. My blood boiled. I didn't waste another moment. I drew my diamond weapons and with my diamond armor, I charged in. I started swinging my sword with all my mighty duck strength. Those guards didn't stand a chance. I couldn't believe how easily I blew through them all. Feel the wrath of my revenge. I made my way into the prison, cutting down anyone who stood in my way. I was feeling like I could take on anything at this point. On day 75 to 78, I reached a room that looked important. I barged in, unafraid, and saw the tiger that had almost destroyed me back at the farm. I felt a tinge of fear creep back into me. Did I have what it took to go up against him? Regardless, what choice did I have now? My family could be in this very room. I shook off my fear and went head to head with the cat, or clawed a sword rather. This tiger was still tough. I got lots of good hits in, but he was so strong. It wasn't doing that much damage. He was good at blocking too. He even scratched me a few times. And I saw tons of birds in cages. Maybe my family wasn't here. As we fought, I noticed a big lever. It looked important. I took a chance and hit it hard. All of a sudden, the cage door swung open. The birds were free. The tiger was in shock at his sudden misfortune. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Some of the birds started to attack him. While he was distracted by all of the birds flying out of their cages, I was able to attack his weak spot. He was done for. The tiger was no more. I looked around the room and saw my baby duck siblings. They were so excited to see me and couldn't believe how much I had grown. I was so relieved to see them. And where's Mama Duck? The ducks look sad. Mama got taken by the big bad dog to his mansion. The other birds say that it's on some sort of volcano. That seems like a bad place to build a mansion. This dog isn't as smart as I thought. Don't worry, little ducklings. I will rescue Mama. On day 79 to 84, I spent some time searching the room where I had originally found the tiger. You never know what kind of information you can find, and this tiger was clearly a leader of this operation. He had all sorts of confidential information laying around, and if nothing else, I could take his valuables. He didn't have any use for them now that he was toast. I looked all around and found a treasure chest. Bingo. I opened it up and found a map. I looked closer. Well, what'll you know? A map right to the Volcano Mansion. Wow. And what else do we have here? I saw that there was a whistle in there too. I blew it, but nothing happened. Huh? Why he kept a broken whistle, I'll never know. But uh, I'll just keep it, just in case. With the room fully inspected, I went back to the ducklings. All right, you guys, let's get the quack out of here. I built you a home that's super secure. Let's go. I saw some of the birds that had helped in the fight against the tiger. They looked unsure of where to go and what to do. I invited them back to the lake house with us. They were very grateful and agreed to come with us. We waddled as fast as we could back to the base. On days 85 to 89, I returned safely home with all my ducklings in a row. I immediately started expanding the house and made more rooms for all of the birds. They loved their new living quarters. Sure beats a small cage. Awu and Taffy had something exciting to show me while I was away. We built something very enchanting. They had found items to make an enchanting table and had what we needed to enchant my armor. Wow, thank you, this is incredible. If I wanted to rescue Mama Duck, I needed to be as ready as possible for going up against Big Dog. This would give me a fighting chance. On days 90 to 94, I walked over to my field of statues. They were almost all done. I just needed to finish building the rest of Waymar's statue. I was so excited to reveal all of my statues to my friends. As I looked at Waymar's statue, I thought about the strange note he had given me. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Huh, you know, that gives me an idea about something. I put the finishing touches on the statues and was finally finished. A field of all my favorite friends. What a sight! On days 95 to 97, I knew it was time to go rescue my mom. I followed the map to the mansion on the volcano. This place was spooky. I could see the appeal of building a mansion on the volcano now. That is, if you're an evil villain, it's perfect for that vibe. 
I had to admit, I felt a bit scared. And that was okay. That didn't mean I was going to run away. No, I was saving my mother, come dogs or lava. I brandished my weapons and started fighting my way through the guard dogs along the path to the door. On day 98, I was exploring the mansion when I went into a room with a strange looking bunny man inside of it. What the? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh wait, I'm you! You're me! Yeah, you're me from my bunny video! Oh yeah, that was an awesome adventure! When everyone is done watching this video, they should go check that one out! Amazing! Well, I've got a family to save! See ya! On day 99, I made it into Big Dog's lair inside of the spooky mansion. After defeating tons of guards, I felt something funny happening. I was leveling up! This is just what I needed! I needed to be a mighty duck to defeat a massive dog! I'm as strong as I can get now! I was super buff! I was going to give Big Dog some trouble with my new strength. He's going to have to answer to this firequacker. It was time for the ultimate smackdown. I looked around the room and saw Mother Duck in a cage. Mom! Zozo, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same question, troublesome quacker. Huh, looks like you haven't learned your lesson. And you've been hitting the gym, I see. Like that's gonna help you. I'm here to take my mother home. Can't you see me and your mom are madly in love with each other? Trying to split us up, are you? I'm not in love with you, you freak! You will be if I keep you locked up long enough. It's called Stockholm Syndrome, love. Look it up. Works in the fairy tales all the time. Dude, you've got some serious issues. This is no way to treat someone you like or love. That's no way to treat anyone. What a weirdo. This dog needed to be put out of his misery. I drew my weapon and attacked Big Dog. I gave him everything I had. Every bit of strength I could muster went into every hit. But he was still too strong. I was barely making a dent. Compared to him, I was like a yappy chihuahua. My blows were just not dealing enough damage. Maybe he was right. Maybe I couldn't defeat him. Had I come all this way just to fail? Then I remembered the broken whistle in the chest. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. I pulled out the whistle and blew it. Nothing. But that's how it was supposed to work. It was a dog whistle. Wow. Only dogs can hear it. Big Dog stopped attacking and sat politely. Good boy. Now play dead. Big Dog's armor came flying off of him. Don't look. Big Dog was completely hairless. Big Dog explained that he wanted all the feathers to cover his naked self. There is nothing wrong with being hairless, and I'm sure many of us would have donated feathers to you, but you chose to ruin people's lives over this. I have had enough with your silly excuses. You aren't going to cage up anyone ever again. With that, a gladiator kicked him out of his window and down into the river of lava. On day 100, I let my mom out of the cage and we went back to the lake house. The ducklings were so excited to see their mother. We all had a wonderful reunion. I introduced everyone to my new family. Everyone couldn't stop raving about all the crazy adventures we'd had and how great the lake house was. We were going to live happily ever after. No more living in cages, just freedom and family. On day one, I spawned in as Nemo. I'm so small, I better be careful. I also noticed I only had three hearts. This was going to be really difficult. Nemo! Huh? I looked behind me and saw my dad, Marlin. He was swimming out of a small cave towards me. You need to get inside. It's not safe. I hurried inside just as a scuba diver appeared. He took his net and snatched my dad. Dad! I tried to swim toward him, but he yelled back at me. No, stay inside. I'll be okay. I promise. The scuba diver swam away, leaving me all alone. I felt really sad, but it was getting dark. I needed to stay safe in the cave and wait until morning to go looking for my dad. On day two, I woke up to the sun shining into the cave. I looked around. Dad? Then I remembered what had happened to him. I got really sad again. I'll find you, Dad. I promise. I swam out of the cave to find materials to build some weapons. I managed to make a crafting table, which helped me to craft a pickaxe and sword. Now I feel more ready if that scuba diver comes back. I continued swimming in the reef and discovered that there weren't a lot of other fish around. Hey, get down here. Huh? I looked down and saw a shrimp waving at me. I swam down to him. What do you think you are doing? The reef isn't safe, especially closer to the surface. Not since the human has been coming around. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. He trapped my dad. I'm sorry. Do you have anyone else to look out for you? No, I'm alone. I could tell the shrimp felt bad for me. He scurried back into his hole and returned with some kelp. Here, take this. You need it more than me. Thank you. I swam carefully back to my cave with the food. I'm going to protect everyone. They all seem too scared and someone needs to stick up for them. 
I arrived at my cave, a plan starting to form in my mind. On day three, I gathered some more sand and even managed to find some gravel. I started to make a little base for myself around my cave. I wanted to make a dome so that the humans couldn't get in. I got part of the foundation done, but I needed to do some other things to get the dome figured out. All of a sudden, I was smacked from behind. I looked and noticed an eel. Hey, get away! I used my new weapon to smack him back. He got me down to one heart, but I finally managed to defeat him. You messed with the wrong fish. I felt my strength grow, and I leveled up into a larger fish. Hey, I have six hearts now. Yes. Neat. I also noticed that I could swim faster since my fins were bigger. Wow. I decided to call it a day. I was beat. On days four to five, I gathered some more materials to build the base. I managed to build a furnace and smelted some sand to make some glass for the dome. I was swimming around when I noticed some bigger fish trying to trap some colorful fish. I swam up to attack the large fish. Hey, get away from them! The colorful fish scattered and the large fish attacked. I managed to get a bunch of hits in and managed to defeat all the fish. Hey! I looked down and saw a fish lying on a rock. It was one of the ones I had hit with my sword. I guess he had tried to swim away. I swam down to him. What were you doing to those fish? We work for the scuba diver. He guarantees us food if we help him capture fish. That's awful. It's life. We need food to live. He tried to smack me again, but I managed to get a hit in. He yelled, and then he disappeared. How sad. How could he betray his own kind? I swam back to the base, contemplating what I had just heard. On days six to eight, I crafted some more glass for the dome. It was starting to look really awesome. I also used some of the materials to make myself a better sword and tools. If that scuba diver comes, I'll be ready for him. I went venturing out, being careful to avoid the surface. I came across a large mound of sand and began to gather it when I was hit by something. I turned and saw a jellyfish. He was ready to strike again. Nobody wants you here. I smacked him and before I knew it, he was gone. That was super easy with my new sword. I was feeling good. The reef was just a little safer already. On days nine to 10, I went venturing a little further. I managed to gather some more supplies when suddenly I heard some screaming. I swam toward the sound and saw a blue fish being grabbed by the scuba diver. Leave her alone! I drew my sword and managed to hit the scuba diver's hand. He let go of the blue fish who swam away. If I can't have her, then I'll have you. The scuba diver grabbed at me and almost managed to get me. I was fast, but he was faster. I swam away, knowing that it was my only chance to get out of this situation. I hid inside the cavity of a rock. The scuba diver retreated, and I let out some bubbles in relief. That was close. I didn't realize that the bluefish had swam into the same cavity in the rock as me. I swam out in surprise. Thanks for saving me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Of course, I'm here to try to protect the reef. I invited the blue fish back to the base where it would be safe for her. She happily agreed. I'm Dory, by the way. Nice to meet you. On days 11 to 12, I helped Dory to make a little home for herself. She seemed to really like it. I even said it reminded her of her old home. Where is your home? Actually, I don't remember. She was an odd one, but I liked her. I went out to gather some better materials in a nearby cave, but then a group of eels attacked me. Ah, get away from me! They were too strong, so I went to a different cave. I was swimming around for a while, but then I saw some iron. Yes. That's exactly what I need. I mined out as much as I could before heading back to the base. I made myself an iron sword, pickaxe, and some armor. This'll show them. I went back to the cave with the eels, and I attacked. In no time, they were all gone. Take that. I went into the cave and sure enough, there was more iron. Cool, this'll set me up for a while. I went back to the base and made some more tools. With those, I made some minor improvements to the base. It was starting to look really good. On days 13 to 15, I went out to learn more about this scuba diver. I needed to find my dad and all the other fish he was taking. I swam around the reef to gather more information. More fish were out today, but not a lot. Hey, do you know where the scuba diver is taking the fish he's capturing? Everyone kept swimming away from me. Huh, I wonder why everyone is so skittish. I finally happened upon an older snail who was willing to talk to me. Everything was peaceful in the reef for a long time. Then one day, a large shadow was cast over us. 
we looked up and saw a monstrous machine churning in the water. It's called a boat. Boat? I said the word. It sounded weird to me. The scuba diver can't stay underwater like us, so he drives the boat. At first, he was just here to take pictures. Then one day, he started snatching fish in bags, or even shooting them with his harpoon. He is a bad man. I was grateful that someone was willing to talk to me, but now I was terrified. The scuba diver sounded really strong and capable. I was just a little fish. What could I do? On days 16 to 19, I woke up and couldn't find Dory anywhere. I hope she didn't swim off on her own. I went outside the base and saw Jacques waving at me again. You better hurry. The octopus just took your friend. Huh? Dory? Yes. She was swimming up near the surface and singing to herself. An octopus came by and grabbed her before she even knew what was happening. Jacques pointed me in the direction of the octopus lair and I took off. The octopus lair was more of a sandy hill covered with seaweed, but it was something. I hurried and swam inside to save my friend. Hey, it's you! I looked and saw Dory. She was with another fish who looked pretty beaten up. Watch out! I turned and saw the octopus try to attack me. I hurried and drew my sword before he could get a hit in. He tried to maneuver around me, but I was able to get some really good hits in. Before I knew it, he was gone. Just then, I leveled up into an even stronger clownfish. I felt my fins grow and I swam around to test them out. I was super fast now. I could create a wall of bubbles. I'm so happy you found me. Also, this is Gil. The other fish swam up to me. Thank you for saving my life. That was really impressive. Thanks. I am happy to protect the fish in the reef. We need it more than ever, especially with this scuba diver around. Are you gonna fight him? I'm not sure. He's so strong and way bigger than me. I know of an item that could help. Huh? It was lost in the sea a long time ago, but it might be the answer to your problem. That was the best news I had gotten all day. Maybe there was a way to fight the scuba diver after all. I want to hear all about it, but you should stay at our base. It'll be safer there. Gil happily agreed to come with us and we headed back to our home. On days 20 to 22, we arrived back at the base, but it was being attacked by skeletons? Ah, oh, gross! I went at them with my sword and fought them off easily. They all dropped a bunch of bones. Maybe they would come in handy later. I was happy that Gil was staying with us too, but I wanted everyone to know that this was a safe place to stay. A statue would be a good idea. I came up with an idea, but I needed to gather some supplies first. I gathered a lot of kelp and even managed to find some sea cucumbers. Yes. Perfect! I knew I needed more for later, so I planted a few and then used the bones from the skeletons to make some bone meal. I fed the bone meal to the sea cucumbers. I won't be running out of those anytime soon. I went to work on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? And if you like swimming along on our adventures, be sure to watch more of my videos by searching for Zozo. That's Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. And subscribe too, since we sure would love to see you around here more often. On days 23 to 26, some skeletons attacked again. I wasn't too nervous though, they were easy to defeat. They dropped more bones, but I noticed that another one dropped some sea lanterns. Wow. This would be perfect to make the dome more bright. They were looking really good. I started to place them around the base and inside the dome. It was looking brighter already. I was outside looking for some more materials when a yellow fish swam up to me. Hello, someone told me that this is a safe place to stay. My family was taken by the scuba diver, and I don't have a home to go back to. I knew exactly how this fish felt. Please, come in. You are more than welcome to stay here. The fish told me his name was Bubbles as we went inside. I started on making some better houses for Bubbles and Gil. They weren't anything fancy, but they were safe. I made sure to smelt some more glass so that we could expand the dome out. It was looking really great. On days 27 to 31, I went to chat with Gil. I wanted to know more about the item he had told me about earlier. My grandfather told me about an old wise turtle that was a protector of the reef a long time ago. But like now, humans kept invading, stealing fish away, and polluting the ocean. The turtle decided to go to Poseidon to bargain for an item that would protect them. In return, he crafted the turtle a special trident. Poseidon? No way! I know, right? Anyway, the old turtle takes this special trident, but Poseidon says it will only work for those who have pure intentions to protect the creatures of the sea. Makes sense. 
It gave the turtle the ability to call the lightning down and control the water. Wow! But the best part was the last gift it granted to the wielder, the ability to walk on land like a human if needed. Wow. That's amazing! So where is the trident now? That's the tricky part. After the turtle passed on, so many fish and creatures wanted the trident for themselves. They fought over it. Because of their greed, it was broken into three pieces and scattered across the ocean. There are rumors as to where they are, but nobody has been able to find all of them. This was a lot to take in. My grandfather told me he had heard of one that was guarded by a shark near a shipwreck. It wasn't a lot to go on, but it was a start. I started out toward the shipwreck that Gil was talking about, though I was a little nervous about the shark. As I approached, I didn't see any shark. Then he came out from behind the hull of the ship. He's pretty big. I was nervous, but I knew I had a job to do. So I charged at the shark and attacked. He was taken aback and tried to get a hit in. He was a good fighter, but I wasn't doing too bad myself. After a minute, I could tell he was really struggling. I was about to make my final attack when he swam away. Huh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. I went and looked around the ship, but it was empty. I was a little confused. I wonder where the trident piece could be. On days 32 to 35, I swam out of the ship, but I heard someone calling me. I looked down and saw some crabs hiding under some coral. I swam down to them. Hey, are you looking for the trident piece? Yeah, how did you know? We've seen a lot of fish come this way. Not nearly as brave as you. Most have retreated, but this isn't the ship you're looking for. So I gathered. All of a sudden, the crab shrieked and scurried away. I looked behind me and saw the scuba diver. You're not getting me today. Then he took out a harpoon and shot me. It paralyzed me and I sank to the bottom of the ocean. Oh no! I struggled but couldn't get out. Then I saw one of the crabs crawl out of the sand and give me a milk bottle, which cleared the paralysis effect. Go! I swam toward the scuba diver, creating a wall of bubbles so he couldn't see me. He dropped something and I hurried to grab it before racing back to the crabs. Hurry, you can come with me. The crabs rushed out of their hole and together we hurried towards the base. On days 36 to 39, we arrived back at the base. I realized that I had picked up a flashlight. Maybe it would come in handy later. I started on a little house for the crabs to live in. They were super grateful that I had helped them. Hey, the ship you're looking for is sunken into the depths of the drop-off. At least that's what we've heard. This was great news. Except it's guarded by a huge monster. Nobody has been able to get into the ship. Okay, less great news but I needed to do some things before I left. I worked on the statue for a little while, planting new sea cucumbers as I went. It was starting to look a little more like what I wanted. On days 40 to 43, Gil told us that his friend Flo needed help. We invited her into the dome and heard her out. My friend Peach, she's a lobster. She was taken by some eels. Huh? They had been terrorizing her for food, but when she couldn't give them any more, they kidnapped her. I can help her, just tell me where I need to go. Flo directed me to a small sunken statue that the eels like to hang around. She's probably there, please go help her. I promised I would and I headed out. I made sure to be stealthy as I went along. After a while, I saw the statue Flo had told me about. It looked like a human holding some sort of bowl. Sure enough, there were a bunch of eels and a colorful lobster sitting in the bowl. I charged. Hey, you give her back. The eels reared up and went to attack. There were a lot of them and they were getting hits in. I barely managed it, but soon after, they were all gone. Thanks for saving me, mister. No problem. I'm a friend of Flo's. Oh, thank goodness. I noticed a small hole in the base of the statue and looked inside. There was a chest full of prismarine crystals and one shaped prismarine. Nice. I headed out with Beach back to our base. Once we arrived, Flo was super happy to see her friend. They thanked me and then I went right to making Peach a little home. I then made something for Flo as well. Then I took the prismarine crystals I had found and smelted them into shaped prismarine. Then I used that to make some new prismarine weapons and armor. Sweet, now I'm ready to take on that monster. On days 44 to 49, I swam to the drop off and looked down. It sure was dark down there. Oh wait, I have a flashlight. I took out the flashlight I had grabbed from the scuba diver and turned it on. It worked! I started to swim down into the depths. I was swimming for a long time when I finally started to see a ship. 
Then I saw something moving toward me. It was a goblin shark. Nope, not today. I took out my sword and braced myself. The goblin shark attacked, but I created my wall of bubbles, distracting it. I hurried and swam into the ship, turning off my flashlight. It was pitch black. Hey, is someone there? Huh? A voice was whispering from the corner. I didn't dare turn my flashlight on yet. I'm a friend. I'm looking for the missing trident piece. Is that what this is? I thought it was just a fancy stick, but I did manage to grab it. I snuck past the goblin shark to get in, but I haven't been able to get out. Why are you down here? I'm a treasure hunter. I heard there was some stuff down here, but nobody mentioned the shark. I'll get us out of here. Don't you worry. Just follow the sound of my voice. Then, when I say swim, you swim. Okay. I found an opening and I turned on the flashlight. Swim! We swam up as fast as we could. The other fish behind me kept whispering to himself. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. After what seemed like forever, we finally got up past the drop-off. I finally looked at the other fish. I bloat. He was a puffer fish wow. and he seemed really tired. He was also holding what I assumed was part of the trident. Here, take this. Huh? I don't want it. He gave me the pole piece and I studied it. It looked like it had carvings on it. Hey, thanks for saving me, by the way. That was gnarly. Of course. How about we get back to my base so you can rest? Sounds good to me. And with that, we headed back to the base. On days 50 to 53, I helped Bloat get comfortable at the base, and then I headed back out to look for some more pieces of the trident. Someone had to know something. On my way out and about, I saw a huge crater in the sea bottom. There were sharks swimming all around, including the one from the first shipwreck I had gone to. It looked like they had someone trapped in a cage of some sort. Hey, you let them go! I raced down with my improved swimming abilities and attacked the first shark. I was able to take him out and then went to attack his friends. After just a few moments, I was able to fend them all off. I went up to the cage and noticed another shark inside. Ah! I went to swim away, but he called out to me. Hey, wait! Don't leave me! I won't eat you! I swam back to him, a bit apprehensively. You don't eat fish? Huh? No, fish are friends, not food. Oh, that's nice to hear. I unlocked the cage and let the small shark out. Thank you. All those other sharks were making fun of me and decided it would be hilarious if they put me in a cage. I'm so sorry they did that to you. He nodded. What brings you all the way out here? I told him all about the scuba diver and the legendary trident I was trying to put together again. I showed him part of the trident I had. The shark got excited. Say, I have something that looks like that. The shark, whose name I learned was Bruce, swam a little further into the crater. There was a little alcove that held a small chest. I opened it and sure enough, there was a piece of the trident. Yes. Whoa, thanks. No problem. The sharks found that here, but they figured it was some sort of fancy stick. But we kept it anyway. I tried to put the pieces together, but nothing happened. I would probably need all of the pieces before it would meld back together. I invited Bruce back to the base. We might need to expand it a little bit, since you are bigger than most of the other fish living there. I'll be sure to help out. We headed back to the base, ready to make some big renovations. On days 54 to 57, Bruce and I arrived back at the base. At first, everyone was a little scared of Bruce, but after a while, they all started to warm up to him. They even helped me make some improvements for him. We built another dome attached to the main dome. This way, people could have more space for themselves. I also made myself a little chest to store the trident pieces in. I didn't want to carry them all the time and risk someone stealing them from me while I was outside the dome. I was about to make some more improvements to the base when Dory swam right up next to me. Hello, could I get your help with something? Sure, Dory. What is it? Oh, I just forgot. She swam away for a little bit, then came back a moment later. I remember. Could you help me find some purple shells? Huh? Purple shells? Yes, it's very important. It was an odd request, but I decided to help her. We ventured out together and found a dozen or so shells in varying sizes. We went back to the base, and I gave Dory the shells I had found. What are they for? You'll see. She left for a while, and I thought she had completely forgotten about the shells. It wasn't until later that she swam back up to me. I have something for you. She held out a necklace made of some purple shells. Oh wow, thanks Dory. I put it on. I actually felt happier. 
you're a good friend. Dory hugged me and then swam away. What a cute friend. On days 58 to 62, I gathered some more supplies for the statue. Flo and Gil even helped me with gathering and building some parts of it. It was looking really nice. We were heading back inside the dome when we noticed that there were some of the scuba divers' minion fish attacking the base. Get away, you traitors! I smacked them with my sword. I swam around and noticed that everyone was there except Bloat. I looked in his house and noticed a note. Huh? It was from the scuba diver telling him to look for the legendary item at the ship and to infiltrate my base. Uh -oh. Bloat was a traitor! I hurried and went to the chest near my cave, and just as I had suspected, the trident pieces were gone. I went back to the base and told everyone that Bloat stole the trident pieces. Everyone saw how upset I was and started to all talk at the same time. It was a little too much for me, so I went into my cave to think. What am I going to do now? I looked at Bloat's note again and noticed something on the back. There was a map with a location circled. This must be where he's going next. I've got to stop him before it's too late. On days 63 to 66, I traveled to the location on the map. It was a rock formation with all kinds of coral growing on it. Then a fish emerged from the coral. He had blended right in. Get away from here! We don't want any more trouble! He tried to bat at me with his fins, but I backed up. Trouble? I'm here to stop all the trouble. The fish looked at me again. I'm looking for the third trident piece. I was led here with a map. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I do. But some other fish came by a little while ago asking the same question. In fact, some of them said they would be back. Just then, I saw the minion fish swimming up to us. I drew my sword. Stop bothering these innocent fish. I charged and attacked. Before long, they were all gone. That was impressive. I swam back to the camouflage fish. Here, I think you need this after that fight. Huh? He handed me a burger and said it was a Krabby Patty. Whatever that was. Thanks, so can you tell me where the trident piece is? It's hiding in the lair of the large glow squid. It's basically impossible to get to, but that puffer fish and his goons might have a chance. That must have been bloat. The fish told me exactly where the lair was and I swam as fast as my fins would go. On days 67 to 70, I made it to the lair of the large glow squid. It was an old underwater temple. Outside of it were some minion fish. They looked like they were guarding it. Then I saw Bloat and a few more minion fish emerge from the large cave. I charged at them. You traitor! I thought you were my friend! Bloat saw me and got scared. He tried to hide behind the minion fish, but I easily took a few of them out. Bloat tried to swim away, but I smacked him with my sword. He looked at me angrily, and then he puffed up. I felt a sharp pain in my side, and then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. <laughs> I felt really sick and there was a pain in my side. I looked and saw one of Bloat's needles lodged in between my stripes. I pulled it out and groaned. Ouch! I knew I needed to check the lair, so I swam down and saw an alcove with a chest. It was empty. Bloat must have gotten the item before I blacked out. I didn't have much strength, so I ate some kelp. I felt so sick and knew I needed to get back to the base to rest up. I made the long journey home wondering what my next move would be. On day 75 to 78, I made it back to the base and rested for a little while. Once I was feeling more like myself, I made some improvements to the base. I added to the domes and made some lights. I also started on a new dome in case we had more fish arrive. I was about to clean out Bloat's little alcove when I heard a weird noise outside the dome. I went out to see and it was Bloat. What are you doing here? I was trying to sneak back in to get some of my things. Get out of my way. You traitor, you aren't welcome here. I lunged at Bloat, making a wall of bubbles to distract him. Then I slashed at him with my sword. I wasn't going to let him knock me out again. He was very disoriented, and before long, I took him out. Then, just like before, I felt my strength surge, and I leveled up into an adult clownfish. I now had 15 hearts. Yeah, I'm unstoppable. I looked up and noticed that Bloat had dropped something. Huh? I was hoping that it was part of the trident, but it looked like a paper. Hmm. He must have already given the trident pieces to the scuba diver. I looked closer at the paper and realized it was a map of where the scuba diver docked his boat. It looked like it was on a schedule and switched every couple of days. This is good information. Yes. I also checked out Bloat's alcove, and sure enough, I found some good stuff, like refined prismarine ingots and some healing potions. This is just what I need. 
I felt bad about Bloat, but ultimately, he had made his choice. Hopefully now, it would be easier to defeat the scuba diver. On days 79 to 84, I traveled to the next location where the scuba diver's boat was supposed to be. I looked around the seaweed field and there was no boat. Huh, I wonder where it could be. I waited it out for a little while, but then I noticed a little movement in the seaweed. I drew my sword in preparation, but then a little sea turtle popped out. Whoa, don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm looking for the boat that's supposed to be here right now. Oh uh, yeah, that usually leaves here in the early morning, so you're late. Okay, well, I guess I should go track him down. Wait, could you help me first? Something fell out of the boat when the scuba diver left. I've been tracking him ever since he stole my dad. I think that it might be important. I felt sorry for this little guy. So many fish and sea creatures were suffering just because the scuba diver was selfish. Of course I'll help. We looked through the seaweed for a little longer before I saw something partially buried in the sand. Hey, I found it. The little sea turtle swam over to me and we looked at the paper. It was a map just like mine with the boat docking locations, but there had been a change. Huh? The boat was heading for one other stop and then my reef. He'll be there in just a few days. I need to go back and warn everyone. I invited the little turtle to come along with me. I learned his name was Squirt. Thanks for helping me. No problem. We'll get your dad back, Squirt. We made our way out of the seaweed and back to the base. On days 85 to 89, Squirt and I were about to reach the base when Jacques waved me over. I swam up to him. I heard you needed some help. From who? It doesn't matter. I just hear these things. You need a way to get on the boat, right? Until I can find the trident, yeah. Jacques went into his hole and then pulled out some sort of helmet. Huh? This could hold you while you're out on the ship. Wow, this is actually really helpful, Jacques. Thanks. He seemed really pleased with himself, and I invited him to live at the base again. He finally agreed. He had a lot of stuff hidden in his hole, but after a few trips, he was settled in. To thank me for helping him move in, he gave me a smithing table and some paintings. It was good to have friends. On days 90 to 94, I made some upgrades. I went to work smithing my prismarine sword using the refined prismarine ingots I had found in Bloat's things. It made my sword much stronger. Wow. I also reforged my armor. Wow, this is amazing. Too bad Bloat had to be a traitor. He would have made a good team. I also worked on some more improvements around the base. The domes were looking awesome. Hopefully it would be safe enough from the scuba diver and whatever his plans might be. On days 95 to 97, we finally finished the statue. It looked amazing, and I was super proud of all my friends for helping me out. I was admiring the statue when Squirt swam up to me. That kind of looks like my dad. That's so cool. I love sea turtles. I always wanted to meet one, and now I have. Sweet, dude. Totally. It was a nice little moment. On day 98, I made my final preparations to get to the boat. Squirt volunteered to lead me to the scuba diver's boat. It'll be awesome, dude. Just leave it to me. I gave the map to Squirt, and we made our final preparations. Hey, before we go kick some scuba diver bum, be sure to subscribe. We want you to see the cool stuff we'll do next. And with that, we headed toward the surface. On day 99, we swam up toward the boat together. There were some minion fish along the way, but with my new sword, we took them out easily. We made it to the back of the boat, and I threw down the item Jacques gave me, which turned into a fish mech suit. Wow. I swam into the head, which was built like a fishbowl, letting me breathe even when outside of the water. I got on the boat with Squirt, and we looked around. The boat was pretty big. It might take some time before we find our families. We looked around the lower deck, and then went up the stairs to the upper deck. There were some fish tanks up there. Dad! I saw him immediately, his orange scales shimmering among the other fish. Hey, I told you to stay safe down below. No, Dad, I'm done hiding. The reef needs protecting, and I'm going to be the one to do it. He seemed taken aback, but then he smiled at me. I'm so proud of you. And with that, I broke the fish tanks, scooping the fish into buckets I found and throwing them back into the ocean. Hey, Squirt! Huh? I looked and saw a larger tank with a sea turtle. Dad! I broke that tank as well, letting Squirt's dad out. Rad, man. Thanks for the assist. Of course, Mr... Crush, man. Crush. Crush and Squirt thanked me and jumped overboard with the rest of the fish. I saw my dad looking at me from the water's surface. Look out! 
I turned around and saw some seagulls. They were trying to grab me out of the fishbowl. On day 100, I fought off the seagulls. They kept screeching at me, but I didn't care. I needed to find the trident. I maneuvered around the seagulls, and after a few hits, the rest of them flew away scared. How pathetic. We turned and saw the scuba diver, no longer in his gear. But he had the trident in his hands. Uh -oh. He had managed to put it together. It's time for you to leave the reef. Not a chance. The scuba diver ran at me, ready to strike. I aimed for his hand that was holding the trident and hit him with my sword. He dropped the trident and I rushed toward it on the floor. All of a sudden, I felt an amazing power flow through my body. The suit powered up and grew in size. I felt so much stronger and faster. No! The scuba diver ran away toward a room. He shut the door behind him. Coward, come out and fight me! I thought he was trying to get away, but then I heard a loud noise. He broke open the door, revealing himself in an even bigger diving suit. He had one hand that shot harpoons, and the other was some sort of electric fist. The scuba diver was scary, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. This ends here. I charged, and so did the scuba diver. We exchanged a lot of blows with our weapons, but then I decided to have some fun. I urged the water to create a giant wave that rocked the boat. I also summoned the lightning to come down from the sky, striking the diver. He was looking pretty rough, and I wasn't making it easy for him. You're just a fish. I'm a human. You will never defeat me. I channeled the power of the storm into the trident before throwing it at him one last time, summoning a huge bolt of lightning. The sky boomed with thunder, and there was a huge flash of light. When it subsided, I saw that the diver was gone. I had defeated him. Yeah! I raised the trident in triumph before swimming back down to the base. Everyone cheered as they saw me. The reef was finally safe, and I was back with my dad. Everything was back to the way it should be. On day one, I was laying in the sand. I stood up to find I was a person stranded on the beach of an ocean world. Whoa, this is a crazy place. I wonder who I am. It looks like maybe I'm a sailor who got stranded around here. But I didn't have time to think about who I was because a freaky looking drowned came crawling out of the ocean and shambling towards me across the beach. Stay back, I don't want any trouble. You, you survived the wreck. The king of the deep won't be happy. We can't deny him his catch. King of the deep? What are you talking about? I don't understand. Then let me help you understand. It'll all make more sense underneath the water. It's so inviting. The drown started walking towards me. It seemed like he wanted me to get drowned too. In my panic, I hit him, and it knocked him back way further than I was expecting. Whoa, I must have knockback power on my attacks. Whoever I am, I must be someone strong. But the undead aren't that easy to beat. The drown continued walking toward me. I really didn't want to risk getting dragged into the deep, so instead, I turned and ran off further down the beach. King of the deep? That guy sounds like trouble, especially if he's in the business of wrecking boats and drowning people. Didn't have long to mull over the details. As I was making my way across the beach, I was suddenly attacked by a vicious husk who looked intent on doing me harm. This time, rather than try to fight, I decided to just run away. I had too few hearts to risk losing them like this. Eventually, I found a shady patch where I could sit down and rest for the night. Hopefully, nothing would attack me there. King of the deep. I hope I don't run into that guy. On day two, I got up and got to work. If I was a sailor, I knew that I needed to be practical and no nonsense. It was time to get out there and make myself some tools. It didn't take me long to find a good clutch of palm trees on the beach, which I used my powerful punches to knock them down and turn the wood into a basic wooden pickaxe. I used my wooden pickaxe to mine enough stone for my first set of stone gear. A stone sword, axe, pickaxe, and shovel. Not a bad start. While exploring the beach, I came upon a stranded toolsmith. Somehow, he looked strangely familiar, so I approached him. Zozo, so good to see you. I was worried for a while that I was the only one who survived the wreck. Those tides were brutal. Oh, so this must have been one of my fellow sailors. Truth be told, I don't remember much of what happened. That's not surprising. I think I remember seeing you take a nasty bump to the head while we were all scrambling around. That's probably why your recollection is a bit fuzzy. Explains a lot. I'm starving too. Do you have any food? Sure. Take some of these rations. He gave me some food, which I quickly ate to replenish my hunger bar. Finally, things were looking up for me. 
you know anything about this King of the Deep guy? His goons are already giving me trouble, and I figure he's got something to do with the big crash. Your guess is as good as mine, pal, but if you do find him, give him one in the face for me. On day three, I went off in search of a decent place to build myself a basic base. I've always wanted a beachside property, I just never expected it to happen under such weird circumstances. I cut down some more palm trees and started building myself a nice wooden shack on the beach. It wasn't very defensible yet, but at this stage, I really only needed somewhere cozy to get myself out from under the beach's blistering hot sun. I took a break for a while and looked out over the vast ocean, the ocean that I somehow knew covered most of the planet. And somewhere out there in all that water, the king of the deep was waiting. I need to get off this planet as soon as possible, before things get dangerous. And as if on cue, a vicious vex emerged in the distance and came running at me. In sheer panic, I pulled out my stone sword and fought for my life. By the time the fight was done, only I remained. The battle with the Vex gave me enough XP to level up and get bigger and stronger. With 15 hearts and a new enchantment, the Frostwalker, which lets me walk on water by freezing it under my feet. At least I can handle myself. That's a plus in this crazy ocean world. For the rest of the day, I worked on my beachside shack. At least one part of this new situation could be nice and relaxing. From day four to day five, I continued gathering materials to expand my shack. There were thankfully a decent number of trees that I could cut down for wood. I just finished collecting a bunch of wood, when suddenly I saw a hauntingly familiar sight. It was the drowned I'd seen early on, walking right towards me. Oh no, not you again. Do you fear the water, Zozo? If you do, then I'm sorry to say you may be on the wrong planet. You don't have to tell me that. The king awaits your attendance, Zozo. You shouldn't be afraid. Things are much better down where it's wetter. I'll take you to him. The drowned advanced towards me, but this time I was going to finish it. I pulled out my stone sword and attacked the drowned relentlessly, each one of my strikes doing bonus knockback damage. Soon enough, the drowned was defeated and destroyed. King of the Deep wants an audience with me? He better come and talk to me himself. And with that, I returned to my base. From day six to day eight, I managed to find a rare above water cave. It was exactly the kind of thing I needed to upgrade my gear in case I ended up encountering any bigger threats. Well, down in the cave, I decided to construct a furnace. It seemed like a wiser choice than having it out there in the open. The deeper I went into the cave, the darker and colder it got. That's when I came across a vein of iron ore in the ground and mined it. I returned to the furnace straight after and started smelting. Soon enough, I had an iron sword and an iron pickaxe on my hands. I also made myself some iron boots and an anvil. Now I can enchant my boots with frost walking. This is more like it. It feels good to finally be properly equipped. Couldn't have done it at a better time because a zombified piglin immediately rampaged through the cave towards me. Luckily, with my iron sword, it wasn't difficult to deal with the zombified piglin and move on, feeling more confident than ever. From day nine to day 10, I decided I needed some stone, so I ventured out across the Dead Sea, where there were huge stone structures. This will be the perfect place to mine some consequence-free stone for expanding my base without tearing up the whole beach. With my Frostwalker powers, I walked across the surface of the sea, and I used my iron pickaxe to start cutting stone from the structures. I collected a fair bit of stone when I turned to start heading back, but I suddenly got a terrible feeling. And the reason for that terrible feeling became obvious when I saw a terrifying water elemental rising from the water. Oh no, I think I know who you are. Yes, I'm glad that you recognize my energy, dear Zozo, as I recognize yours. I am his highness, the king of the deep. You almost came to stay with me, you know, but you rejected my gift. How very ungrateful of you. You're lying. You're a liar. I know that nothing good awaits me down there in the deep. I reject your offer. I ran forward and struck him with the sword. It did nothing. He wasn't harmed in the slightest. I struck again and again. Nothing. I knew that if I was there for a second longer, he might have dragged me down. I got into the boat as fast as I could and rowed until the king of the deep was gone and I was back on the safe dry shore. Yeah, I really don't like that guy. That much is now officially confirmed. I turned and saw something charging across the shore towards me. A huge mutated bee. For a second, I panicked. But before I could attack, it started to speak. Zozo, thank goodness. You survived the shipwreck. I'm sorry, who are you? You don't remember me? I'm First Mate Benson. We're good friends. 
You really must have hit your head hard during the wreck. Yeah, I've heard that much. Say, why don't you come back to my base with me? I need to get a better sense of what we're up against here. You've got a base? Sweet! Let's go! From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Benson. Seeing as my base wasn't that big yet, I decided I needed to make it bigger. I started from scratch and built a newer, bigger version of my home. I also built Benson a whole new room, which, thankfully, wasn't that difficult with all the resources I'd been collecting. Take a load off, Benson. I've got an important errand to run. Sure thing, Zozo. Let me know if you need anything. Oh, and take this bow and arrows. You might need it. Benson gave me a bow. Benson, I'm sure this will come in handy. I left back into that same mining cave I'd visited all that time before. I searched until I found another rich vein of iron ore. I mined enough and started heading back toward the cave furnace I'd built above. When I saw something frightening, a skeleton jackal wandering through the cave. I'm really lucky that Benson gave me that bow. Trying to stay as quiet as possible, I pulled out the bow and unleashed a volley onto the skeleton jackal. It was defeated before it even knew I was there. Phew, that was a close one. I then proceeded to the furnace and smelted myself some more protection in the form of an iron chest plate, leggings, and a helmet. It never hurts to have some extra defense when you're going against a strong foe. From day 13 to day 15, Benson and I made a campfire outside the base and decided to spend the night standing out on the beach, watching the ocean and discussing our plans for the future. This isn't going to be easy, Benson. I faced this king of the deep directly and nothing I did could even hurt him. How did he get us down here in the first place? Well, it was our ship, you see. Right, yeah, we were sailing and then it crashed. I know that much. No, Zozo, it wasn't that kind of ship. It was a spaceship. We were flying through the sector, then suddenly the spaceship got a strange signal from this planet. The captain got obsessed with it, insisted on taking us down here. But when we entered the atmosphere, the captain drove the ship straight down into the water like he was in a trance. I think the king of the deep, he took over his mind with the signal. He's the reason we're all here. Great, so he's even more powerful and dangerous than I'd thought. If he could take down our whole ship with his thoughts, then I don't know how we're gonna have any hope of beating him. I don't think we have a choice, Zozo. We've just gotta try, come what may. From day 16 to day 19, I woke up with the base feeling eerily quiet. I checked Benson's room, only to find that he wasn't there. But he left a note, it read, Zozo, I've headed out to the deep frozen ocean. I think there might be some valuable secrets there. And if there really were valuable secrets out there, I didn't want Benson to have to face them alone. I immediately went out and headed for the deep frozen ocean. Thankfully, because the water had already frozen over, I didn't even need my enchantment here. I just walked around, looking for Benson, when suddenly, an angry looking zombie spoiner jumped out. Well, 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 you finally arrived. I suppose you're looking for your buzzy friend. What did you do to him? I gave him a nice little nap under the ice. It's very refreshing down there. You monster, I'll break him out. There's no escape for you or him. This is what happens to those who defy the king of the deep. The zombie spoiner attacked me, but I had no time for his ridiculousness today. I ran in with my iron sword and destroyed him as quickly as I could. My true priority was saving Benson. As I walked, I saw something under the ice. It was Benson. I took my iron pickaxe and smashed some of the ice over the water. That's when Benson, thankfully alive, floated up and jumped out of the water. Zozo, you saved my life. How could I ever repay you? By staying alive and staying safe from now on. Head back to the base. I'm gonna look around for a while longer. Will do, Zozo. Benson left, and I continued my search across the icy surface of the deep frozen ocean. During my search, I encountered a few husks that were easy enough to dispatch, but didn't find any useful information. Just when I was about to give up, though, a strange figure emerged. It was the King Pig. You seek to defeat the King of the Deep. What? How did you... I know many things, my son. If you wish to defeat the king, you will need to obtain the shield of the deep. It is the only way. But how can I find... Some answers you must discover for yourself. Good luck on your quest, Zozo. Before I could say another word, the king pig disappeared just as quickly and strangely as he'd arrived. From day 20 to day 22, I returned to my base, only to see a couple of husks wandering across the beach, looking for new victims. This beach has a major husk problem. I guess it's up to me to solve it. I used my bow to pick the husks off from a distance without the risk of engaging directly. I didn't want to risk losing any more hearts without a good reason. Once the husks were gone, I returned to my base and found first mate Benson waiting for me. 
Zozo, Zozo, I have some good news for you. While you were gone, I've been working on a statue. Something that I figured would motivate us to do our best, you know? You always said that motivation is extremely important. A statue, huh? I'll go take a look at it. Be right back. I went to investigate behind my base and saw that Benson had made some amazing progress on the statue already. Wow. It was truly a sight to see. I'm feeling more inspired already. Can you guess what the statue is gonna be yet? If you can, tell me down in the comments and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want more Minecraft adventures from Zozo. From day 23 to day 26, I was hanging out at my base when suddenly a group of nasty looking drowned approached me. The rest of the group stood back while one stepped forward to talk to me. The king of the deep awaits your visit. He grows impatient, Zozo. Well, he should come up here and tell me that himself. Get away from my base. Why waste your time up on the land? Water is inevitable. The tide washes away all eventually. Why not just give up? Let the ocean current carry you down to your fate. Stop saying creepy stuff. I'm getting sick of it. I pulled out my bow and fired at the drowned, taking them out one by one. It took a little while, but luckily with my bow, I was able to attack them without getting too close. The last thing I wanted was for them to grab me and drag me down into the water. When all the drowned were defeated, I noticed that one of them dropped something. I went to get a closer look, and it was spears. Wow, these will be great for fighting if anyone else attacks me. Now I've got to test them out. To try out my new spears, I headed out to the Dead Sea in search of some mobs I could fight. I didn't find any, but I did practice throwing my spears anyway, and I got pretty good at it. While I was practicing, a fisherman came up to me. Are you Zozo? I sure am. Wait, you're not with the King of the Deep, are you? No, matey. I'm trying to hide from him. He wants me brought in as a prisoner. Do you know a safe place where I could stay? I sure do. I brought the fisherman back to my base with me, and I built him a room so he'd have a comfortable place to sleep. Thank you. What a lovely room. Quite cozy, but I will not complain. Having a safe space to live means a lot. No problem. Hope you'll enjoy your stay. From day 27 to day 31, I started trying to figure out where I could find the Shield of the Deep. Hey, fisherman, have you ever heard of the Shield of the Deep? Shield of the Deep? Oh, Zozo, my lad, I've heard tell of that very shield. Legend has it, the shield is found in the darkest, coldest part of the ocean, far from the sun's light or the eyes of man. So, like, the deep frozen ocean, then? Aye. Cool, I guess I'll go check it out. I traveled to the deep frozen ocean and looked for any signs of the shield. Brr, frozen is right. I tried to keep walking, but a piglin brute was blocking my path. Hey, excuse me, just trying to get by. If the shield you wish to see, then you will have to go through me. Well, okay, if you insist. I battled the piglin brute and managed to knock him down. I didn't destroy him, but I bought myself enough time to run by and get away. From day 32 to day 35, I kept wandering through the deep frozen ocean. As I explored, I spotted a sea serpent taking a nap. I didn't want to wake him up, but there wasn't anyone else to ask. Sorry to bother you, but do you know where I can find the Shield of the Deep? Eh? No, sorry. I don't know what. No, no, it's not a person. A shield. Like, you know, a shield? For fighting? Oh, oh, sh shield? No, still don't know it. That's okay. I'll keep looking. I left the sea serpent and carried on exploring the area. Looking for something, Zozo? The King of the Deep suddenly appeared. I tried to fight the King of the Deep, but he was still way too strong. If I try to keep this up, there's no way I'll make it. All I could do was turn and run until the King was out of sight. On the way, I ran into the Sea Serpent again. Was that the King of the Deep? We both need to get out of here. Follow me. With that, I ran off as the Sea Serpent slithered with me. Can I stay with you for a while though? Now that guy knows where I live, I'm scared he'll come back. Sure, come back to my base. From day 36 to day 39, the sea serpent and I headed back to the base. Once we were there, I built a room for him to stay in. After I finished, he came to talk to me. Wait a second, did you ask me something about the shield of the deep? I remember it now. I was pretty sleepy before, my memory wasn't great. But my grandma used to talk about some kind of special shield. I think it may be the one that you're looking for. There's a clue waiting in the frozen ocean. That's what Mima always used to say. Oh, that's great. Thank you. No problem. Oh, also, I saw that statue you've got going on. I added a bit to it. Can you take a look and make sure I got it right? I followed the sea serpent to the statue, and it was really starting to look great. You did an awesome job. 
From day 40 to day 43, I wanted to find a way to upgrade my weapons and armor. I decided to ask the fisherman for some advice. Any idea where I can find some upgrades? Zozo, me boy, you came to the right place. I've learned more about upgrades than there are fish in the sea. And thankfully for my job security, that's a lot. You can find some upgrade materials in yonder cave. Well, I don't know what a yonder is, but I do know of a cave. Thanks. I headed to the cave, but the entrance was blocked by a gorgon. I had to think fast to take it down. But with the use of my spears, I was able to defeat it. Inside the cave, I found diamonds. Tons of them. Perfect. That fisherman was right. I took the diamonds back to my base and used them to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. Now I feel like I'm ready for just about anything. From day 44 to day 49, I took my new diamond weapons and headed to the frozen ocean. Let's see if I can find that clue Mima Sea Serpent was talking about. As I was walking, I was ambushed by a dread knight. He was really strong, but my diamond sword was stronger. With some careful dodging and a few swipes of my sword, I managed to beat him. But before I could get back to looking for clues, I heard a voice. Help! Someone help! I followed the sound and saw a black hippogriff surrounded by husks. Oh no, I'll save you. I rushed at the husks and slayed them one by one with my trusty diamond sword. Thank you, stranger. I thought I for sure was a goner. I'm Zozo. There, I'm not a stranger anymore. I'm Hilly, Hilly the Hippogriff. What brings you to these parts? I'm looking for the Shield of the Deep. Oh goodness, are you trying to take on the King of the Deep? Legend has it's the only shield that can protect against him. I am. I may have an idea of how to find it. There's a wise old ice dragon nearby. He can point us in the right direction. From day 50 to day 53, I followed Hilly to the domain of the ice dragon. As we traveled there, the piglin brute from before jumped in front of us. So, it appears we meet again. It's time for you to meet your end. Jeez, not this guy. But this time, with my new upgraded sword, I was strong enough to defeat him for good. Let's find that dragon. We explored for a while and then came to a house with an old ice dragon sitting out in front. Oh, visitors. Don't get many visitors these days. Hi, I'm Zozo. I heard you might know where I can find the Shield of the Deep. Oh, yes, the shield. Well, last I heard, it was being hoarded by a mutant hoglin. Really mean fellow. I'm not sure where he's keeping it, though. You hoglin, that's more than I knew before. Thanks for your help. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to my base to figure out what to do next. When I got there, I saw my friends had been adding on to it while I was gone. They added some guard towers, some shelves, and some banners. This place looks great. The guard tower will keep us safe, the barrels add storage, and the banners look so cool. Thanks, everyone. No trouble at all. While I was checking everything out, the mutated bee came up to me. Zozo, can you help me destroy the Dread Scuttler? She's causing so much turmoil and trouble, and I'm scared she won't stop unless a hero stops her for good. I'm on it. The Dread Scuttler was pretty close by, so it didn't take me long to find her. Luckily for me, she didn't stand much of a chance against my spear. After I was done, I went back to the base. She won't bother anyone anymore. Thank you. I made this for you while you were gone. As a thanks. Wow, a diamond helmet. This will go great with my sword. Thank you. From day 58 to day 62, I was woken up by the mutated bead. Zozo, sorry to wake you, but come look. We've been working on the statue. I followed the bee to check out the progress everyone had made. This looks great. I can't wait to see it when it's done. While I was checking out the statue, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, and there was a huge swarm of drowned surrounding my base. Oh no, get out of here. Not until you join us. Until you take your rightful place. No use fighting the tide, Zozo. No! I fought the drowned one by one, but there were so many of them. Before I could stop them, they knocked the fisherman to the ground. I defeated the rest of the drowned, but it was too late. The fisherman was gone. I won't let them get away with this. From day 63 to day 66, I returned to the frozen ocean. I'm more determined than ever. They hurt my friend. This is personal now. Well, even more personal than it was before. As I was exploring, I stumbled on a book. Hey, book of maritime history. I wonder what that means. I opened the book and started to read. It says the shield of the deep is hidden on the beach. That must be where the mutant hoglin took it. As I was reading, a drown snuck up behind me and attacked me. But I was quick and I got my sword ready and fought back. Pretty soon, he was toast and I was ready to continue my search. 
From day 67 to day 70, I traveled to the beach to look for the Shield of the Deep. Oh, hey, I recognize this place. I've got a pretty good feeling about this. Who goes there? Uh-oh, I forgot about the mutant Hoglin. He was huge, and he looked really strong. But if I wanted to get that shield, I had no choice but to fight him. Any chance you'll let me go by and get that shield? Nope. Draw your sword and battle me. So I did. Jeez, he's really tough. I'm not sure I'll be able to beat him. I fell back until I could barely see the beast in the distance. To my surprise, a drowned ran up, but he didn't attack. Be not afraid. I'm not here for you this time, Zozo. I'm here to destroy this worthless hoglin. What? We both have an interest in retrieving the shield. I stood back out of the way as the drowned fought the mutant hoglin. Eventually, the hoglin picked up the shield and ran away as the drowned chased after him. Well, that was interesting. From day 71 to day 74, I headed to the mutant hoglin's beach base to find that shield. But when I got there, I didn't see anything except for a note on the ground. Hey, what's this say? I picked it up. It says, foolish little Zozo, you can't outmaneuver the king of the deep. The shield is mine, and you will never get your filthy surface dwelling hands on it. That's so rude. Not to mention, evil. I left the base. From day 75 to day 78, I headed back to my base to come up with a new plan. If I can't get the shield, what am I gonna do? When I got back to the base, I saw my friends waiting for me. Boy, am I glad to see you. The sea serpent approached me. We made some improvements. Check it out, we added an armory. And then Private Benson came over. And I made us a lowrider pool. That's a nice ride, really awesome, thank you guys. But it wasn't just friendly faces, sadly. Come out and face me, Vandal. The mutant hoglin had followed me home. This time, I have to defeat him. I drew my sword and attacked. It was a pretty close call, but after a hard fight, I was finally able to beat him. I felt myself getting stronger. My hearts increased to 40 and I gained an ability, an ice blast that fired freezing blasts at my enemies. This is awesome. Hey, look at this. There was a note that the mutant hoglin dropped. It says Dead Sea. I'll go check it out. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled to the Dead Sea to look for anything important that I didn't notice the first time. Let's see what I can find. As I was looking around, I spotted an ice dragon. Hi, are you the same ice dragon I met before? Don't think so. I've never seen you. But is there any chance you're here looking for a way to defeat the King of the Deep? I am. Me too. Let's work together. I've heard he's got a base somewhere on the beach, but I need help finding a map to it. Come with me. Okay. I joined the new ice dragon in exploring, but I wasn't sure what we were looking for. I walked ahead of him when I suddenly heard a noise behind me. I turned and saw the ice dragon getting ready to attack me. Hey, what gives? I tricked you. I'm working with the king of the deep, you fool. Oh no. What he didn't count on was my new strength and my ice blast. Before long, I was able to defeat him. Can't believe that guy tried to trick me, but at least I have some more information. From day 85 to day 89, I decided to go back and visit the Black Hippogriff and see if he had any more helpful information for me. When I reached the frozen ocean, I headed to his house. Hi again. Zozo, welcome back. How's the quest to defeat the King of the Deep going? Well, I've been trying to get the Shield of the Deep, but he got to it first. Now I don't know what to do. Oh no. Well, I might have an idea for you on how you can get it back. The King of the Deep is a water elemental, so he's vulnerable to ice attacks. If you have any way to freeze him, that could slow him down long enough for you to steal the shield back. Wait, I have ice blasts. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Happy to help. Good luck, Zozo. From day 90 to day 94, I decided to gather some materials to upgrade my gear before I finally went to confront the King of the Deep. So I headed back to the cave to see what else I could find. Oh, hey, a chest. I wonder what's in here. I opened the chest and it contained a netherite ingot. Whoa, this stuff is pretty rare. I gathered up the netherite ingot and approached the smithing table next to the chest. I added the ingot to my diamond sword to create a netherite sword. This is amazing. If I can get my hands on the shield, I'm sure I can use this to win. From day 95 to day 97, I took my new sword back to my base. When I got there, my friends were waiting for me. Check out my new sword. That's great. We have something to show you, too. The statue is almost done, but we wanted you to put in the last two pieces. 
I followed them to the almost finished statue. Private Benson gave me the last two gold blocks to put into place. When I was done, I took a step back and got a good look at it. Wow, it's King Neptune! This is amazing! Looking up at this statue of the real king of the ocean, not that bully of a water elemental, it reminds me what I'm fighting for. Thank you so much for building it! On day 98, I was preparing to head out and finally face the king of the deep for our final battle. As I was getting ready, the mutated bee came to talk to me. Zozo, I've been thinking. I want to come help you with this fight. You shouldn't have to face the king alone. Are you sure? It's going to be dangerous. What's life without a little danger? It'll be worth it. Thank you. On the way out of the base, I ran into the sea serpent again. I'll be here waiting for you guys when you get back. I know you'll win. You're a hero, Zozo. You're always having amazing adventures on this channel. And if you want to see more of Zozo's adventures in Minecraft, make sure to subscribe. Thank you. That really means a lot. On day 99, the mutated bee and I traveled to the King of the Deep's base on the beach. There were a lot of husks guarding the entrance, but the mutated bee kept them busy while I ran inside. There were more husks inside the base, but I was ready for them. I blasted them with my ice blast and fought them with my netherite sword. Gotta keep going and find that shield. It must be in here somewhere. On day 100, I continued fighting my way into the King of the Deep's base. I fought the husks on the walls, and after defeating them, my hearts increased to 80, and I gained the Energy Blast ability. Great, now all I need is that shield. You mean this shield? I turned around and saw the shield, but it was being guarded by a big, powerful drowned. Hand that shield over. Never! It belongs to the king now, as all things soon will. The oceans will rise and claim the land and all who walk upon its shores. Not if I have anything to say about it. I fired an energy blast at the drowned, then followed it with a blast from my ice blast and finished him off with my sword. Finally, the shield of the deep, I'm ready. I grabbed the shield and made my way down to the king's throne room. I opened the door and he was there waiting for me. Before I could attack, he started to transform. He grew bigger and stronger, evolving into a much more powerful version of himself. You don't scare me. No? Well, I should. Your defeat shall be swift. I fired my ice blast at the King of the Deep, freezing him long enough for me to attack with my sword. He knocked me back with a hard hit, but the shield protected me from the damage, as well as giving him a harming effect from the spikes. We continued fighting for a while. I used all the abilities I had. The energy blast, my shield, the ice blast. After a lot of fighting, I felt a surge of power, and my hearts increased to 100, and I felt myself getting stronger. I knew I could beat him. I shot my ice blast, trapping him, and with one more swipe of my sword, defeated him. Time to wave goodbye to the king of the deep. Get it? Wave? Like the ocean. On day one, I spawned in as a normal guy. No, wait, I'm a Navy SEAL. Awesome, I'm a trained warrior. But wait, what's this? I looked closer and saw I barely had any hearts and no armor. I was just a recruit. It looks like I haven't even been trusted with a weapon. Bummer. I guess I better take a look around and see what I can find. I took a peek around the deck and saw that the ship was pretty empty. This was a huge ship. It was kind of eerie. Nothing seemed to be going on. And as I looked around, I noticed there wasn't any land nearby either. What do I do now? Well, I'm a Navy SEAL. I should know how to swim, right? I walked over to the edge of the ship and jumped into the water. I swam around the anchor for a bit, but didn't see anything else around. Suddenly, I heard some movement in the water behind me, and I was attacked by a shark. Shiver me timber, it's a great life. The shark bit at my ankles as I furiously swam toward the anchor. I grabbed onto the chain and clambered up as the shark snapped furiously below. Soon, I reached the top deck. Yikes, I guess I'll be staying out of the water for the time being. Sometime later, the sun was beginning to set. As I watched the sunset, there was suddenly a huge explosion. Whoa, what was that? I headed off in the direction of the blast. As I moved across the ship, I saw there was a huge hole blown in the top of the deck. As I got closer, I saw it was filled with zombies who attacked. There were zombies on this ship? Things just got interesting. The zombies were determined to eat my brains, but I was actually well trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so I managed to fight them off. One of them also had dropped a stone sword, which I made quick use of. As the last zombie disappeared, I noticed it had dropped something. What's this? It looks like a flashlight. I can use this to navigate the inside of the ship. I settled myself down for the night and couldn't help but think. Where did all the zombies come from? Did they used to be seals too? On day two, I felt like I had no choice but to start exploring the hole left behind from the explosion. I didn't love the idea of going into a hole that was full of zombies before, but what other choice did I have? It's pretty dark down here. I better use that flashlight. The flashlight let out a little bit of light and I set off into the darkness. As I walked the corridors, I couldn't help but get the feeling something was watching me. What's that? I looked toward one of the doors. I could have sworn I saw something. 
This place is giving me the creeps. I kept moving through the maze of tunnels when I heard a squeaking up ahead. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. I got a little closer and was attacked by a bunch of rats. These were no ordinary rats though. Their flesh was rotted and their eyes glowed with a red hue. I quickly took them out. I've got a bad feeling about this. I continued down the hallway but could hear another sound up ahead. It sounded like some heavy thuds. Maybe some kind of machinery? I kept going when suddenly the source of the noise came to the light. It was a giant zombie. Uh-oh. The zombie hit me as I ran away. There's no way I could take this guy on. Just ahead, there were some open doors and I quickly ran inside as the zombie chased me. He hit the wall, smacking his head. This is the exact situation where a brain comes in handy. He let out a low groan and stumbled away from me. That's when I noticed he dropped something. He picked it up. Whoa, night vision goggles. These could not have come at a better time. I was getting really tired of being surprised in the dark. After I put them on, the whole ship was lit up. Nothing is gonna sneak up on me now. On day three, the zombie threat had left, so I decided to do some more exploring. My new night vision goggles had made things much easier. As I ran through the hallways, I tried to open different doors, but everything was locked. This is gonna be a tough 100 days if I can't get into anything. I continued through the maze until finally I found a door that was open. When I entered the room, I saw it was full of storage. Amazing, I hope I can find some good loot in here. I began rummaging through the boxes and saw that there were a ton of building supplies. I kept looking and soon came across a whole stash of food. I can't believe my luck. All this food looks good to eat too. I stuffed my pockets full. Who knows if there was any other food aboard? I managed to find another container full as well. Soon I had gone through all of the boxes except for one big one. I jumped up and was surprised to see what was inside. Hey, who are you? Ah, uh, you, you're not a zombie. No, and neither are you. Who are you? My name is Marcus, but my friends call me Switchblade. Well, they used to call me that, I suppose. Yeah, what's going on around here? All I know is there was some kind of zombie infection that spread through the whole ship. I got separated from another group of sailors who were headed for the wrecks. They might still be alive. We decided we'd go look for more survivors. But first, we needed to get to the flight deck and regroup. On days four to five, Switchblade and I had made it back to the top of the ship. Using the materials I had gathered in the supply room, I started putting together a simple base. Nowhere on the base was 100% safe, but at least here, we could be near the edge, and we knew zombies wouldn't be able to attack during the day. Once the tent was set up, I got to work on the inside, filling it with all of the crafting tables we needed along with some beds for us to sleep in for the night. As a final safety measure, I put up a fence across the ship so that even at night, zombies wouldn't be able to sneak up on us. When it was all done, Switchblade came and took a look. Nice work, Zozo. This base is top notch. With the base complete, I headed over to the crafting table and made a set of stone tools. I couldn't get through any of the doors, but maybe with some tools I could just break through the walls. With my new set of stone tools, I headed over to the ship wall and tried swinging my pickaxe. Huh, not even a dent. I tried a few surfaces, but no luck. At the very least, I now had some tools in case of an emergency. That night, I headed outside with my goggles on to see if the zombies would give us any issues. Looks like they're keeping their distance. This should be a safe place for us to work out of. On day six to eight, Switchblade met me inside the tent to discuss our next move. Well, it's not the most detailed map, but take a look at this. Switchblade threw the map up on the wall. He was right. It's a good thing he chose the military and not art school. This should give you an idea of how to get to the bunk area, where I believe the other sailors had headed. There's no guarantee anyone is there, but more sailors is an invaluable asset at this juncture. I agreed, and so I headed out of the tent and into the hole. Using Switchblade's map as a guide, I made my way down a corridor I didn't notice before. By following that, I came across a staircase that took me even deeper into the ship. I can't help but have a sinking feeling about this. I reached the bottom and started moving ahead through the darkness. I could hear some shuffling up ahead. There was a small group of cave spiders. The spiders, 12 o'clock! I charged forward with my sword in hand and started hacking away. The spiders managed to land a few hits, but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. Soon enough, the small group was all destroyed. Time to get to those sailors. I pushed just a little farther ahead and came across the door. I tried to push it open, but it didn't budge. I had no idea if zombies were nearby, so I gave the door a small tap. Psst. Hey, is anyone in there? No response. Maybe I was being too quiet. I raised my voice a little more. Can anyone hear me? Do you copy? Is there anyone inside? This time I thought I heard a little bit of movement inside, but nobody was responding. Looks like I've only got one more option. I started banging on the door. Hey, wake up! Your buddy Switchblade sent me! The door flew open. Man, have you lost your mind? Don't you know there's zombies around? I was trying to be quiet, but no one was answering. We thought you were a zombie trying to sniff us out. You wouldn't have been the first, you know. I get that. I'm sorry. So, who are you guys? We're from Switchblade's crew. I'm actually the first mate on the ship. I suppose I'm the acting commander of the ship as well. If you're the acting commander, that means something must have happened to the captain. I'm sorry for your loss. I am too, although I don't know if I would call it a loss. The captain is technically still alive. You mean he's a zombie? Yeah. Before this all happened, we spotted a mysterious island offshore. The captain went to explore and returned with this mysterious artifact. That very night, a zombie outbreak occurred and we ran down here. 
That's awful. Well, maybe we can figure out how to stop everything. Do you have any more information about the captain that could help? Yes. Well, he is a zombie. He's not quite as far gone as the rest of them. In fact, I think the secret. But before he could share that secret, the zombie appeared over his shoulder and killed him. We had forgotten to lock the door. Oh no! Everyone get behind me. A zombie horde came pouring into the room, and I did my best to fight the off with my sword. I shouted in fear as the zombies kept trying to rip us to pieces. Luckily, I was getting pretty good at fighting these guys, and I was able to take them all out. We better hurry and get out of here, guys. There could be more on the way. We took off running and headed back up towards the base. On days 9 through 10, I emerged from the boat with the two sailors. We were all still processing the loss of the first mate, but we had to focus on our own safety. I wonder what the first mate was going to tell us. We soon arrived back at the base, and I got right to work building them a tent of their own. They had mentioned having a background in medicine, so I decided to set them up in their own medical tent. We didn't have too much in medical supplies yet, but seeing the base double in size was giving me hope. We all felt like we could use a little bit of hope, so I offered to make a statue that could serve as inspiration to us all. There was a certain Navy SEAL I had read about that I found particularly inspiring. The interesting thing about him was that he wasn't from the past, he was actually from the future. After a bit, I was running low on supplies, so I stopped for the time being. Any guesses on who you think I'm building? Let me know in the comments. On days 11 to 13, I awoke to a strange noise. Is that barking? Something doesn't sound quite right about it. Down in the water, I could see a seal, and it was being chased by the shark from earlier. Can someone give me a hand down here? The seal can talk. That's interesting. Let's see if I've got anything that can help. I ran back to my tent and opened up one of the crates. Inside was a collection of rocks. I grabbed a handful and ran back over to the edge of the boat. Hey shark, suck on this. I started chucking rocks down into the water and managed to hit the shark a few times. He kept chasing the seal around, but I could tell it was bothering him. Eventually, it was enough to let the seal get away. Hey, climb on up. The seal swam up to the anchor and ascended the chain. When he reached the top, he plopped down in exhaustion. Oh, thank you. You really saved my life. No problem. You gotta look after my fellow seals, after all. Oh, because you're also a seal. I get it. Why was that shark chasing you anyway? I have no idea. He's hungry, I guess. But have you seen what's going on under your ship? There's something down there that I think would blow your mind. What do you mean? There's this massive rocky column coming out of the earth and into your ship. I've never seen anything like it before. You should go down there and take a look. I'd love to, but I don't think I can just do that. I'm gonna need some scuba equipment to get down there. Suit yourself. I headed over to the other sailors and let them know what I had learned. They were just as confused as I was, but let me know there was an equipment room back down on the ship that should have the scuba gear I'm looking for. They also gave me a stash of iron they had collected. Thanks guys, this will be helpful for sure. I headed over to the crafting table and put together a new set of iron armor. I also took some time to make an iron sword. If I was heading back into the boat, I needed all the help I could get. On days 14 to 15, I took my new gear and headed back down into the ship. I always had a bit in my stomach when I went down here, but there's no way I'd be able to survive out here without searching for answers. After after a little bit of exploring, I could hear something up ahead. More spiders! Disgusting! I leapt into battle with my new iron sword and started hacking and slashing. With each kill, the spiders shriveled and faded away. As I cut my way through the spiders, I noticed there was a group of zombie rats watching too. Come and get some! The spiders had all been destroyed, but I guess the rats were feeling a little intimidated. They all ran away in fear. Yeah, that's what I thought. I pushed forward through the dark tunnels and eventually reached the dive room. Awesome! Now I can snag some scuba gear. I opened the door and saw the giant mutant zombie from earlier was inside. What the heck? How did you get in here? The zombie wasted no time attacking me. The joke was on him though. This time, I was prepared. How do you like me now? I bobbed and weaved as he tried to hit me with shockwaves and pound me into the ground. I was doing well, but this guy packed a punch. I still only had five hearts, so I needed to be careful. My new gear and experience was still too much for him though. He came out victorious. Not so tough anymore, are you? With the adrenaline still pumping through my veins, I felt an extra surge of energy and was promoted to the rank of seaman. And check it out! Now I have 10 hearts! Feeling stronger than ever, I took a look around the room. Hanging up was a full scuba suit, so I grabbed each piece and placed it in my inventory. Then I saw something laying in the corner of the room. Awesome! A harpoon gun! Now I can protect myself from any underwater threats I come across. I checked the nearby crates and saw they were full of harpoons. I gathered them all up and headed back up to the flight deck. On day 16 to 19, I had arrived back on the flight deck, and I noticed that the seal was still there. Hey, how's it going? To be honest, not great. That shark is still down there, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get away from him. I was hoping I could stay here for a bit. Yeah, that should be fine. But you do know this ship is infested with zombies, right? I'll take zombies over sharks any day. <laughs> okay, but what about water? Don't you need it? At least a little bit? I do. I was hoping you might have an idea about that. You know what? I think I do. Hang tight and let me get something set up. I grabbed some building supplies and started working on a tent for the seal to stay in. Once I got the outside set up, I got to work making him a tank to live in. This way he'll have some water he can easily access, even though he's not in the ocean. Once that was finished, I headed over to do some more work on the statue. I managed to get a decent amount done, but still had a long way to go. There was certainly a good shape taking place, but can you tell what it is yet? 
On days 20 to 22, I headed into my tent to get geared up. I grabbed my scuba gear off the armor rack and put it on. Then I opened up the nearby crate and took out my harpoon gun and harpoons. I know that shark is still out there, so I have to take him down before I can even start looking at that column the seal mentioned. But before I jump in, could you help me out? Over 40,000 of you have joined the Zozo Navy, and we'd love to have even more join up with us for even bigger adventures. So hit the subscribe button and let's do this. I put on my scuba helmet and got ready to jump over the edge of the boat. Here goes nothing. On days 23 to 26, I got a running start and leapt off the side of the boat, landing in the ocean below. All right, let's find this shark and take him out. With my harpoon gun in hand, I swam out from the boat, scanning the scenery for a glimpse of the aquatic monster. I swam and swam, but nothing. Hmm, maybe the shark left after all. I don't see any sign of him anywhere. Just when I was starting to feel safe, the shark Ouch, you're gonna pay for that. I took aim with my harpoon gun and fired. I was able to hit him, but he showed no signs of slowing his attack. Oh man, I'm really starting to feel out of my element down here. The fight was intense. I kept firing my harpoons as the shark kept trying to take chunks out of my arm. Our fight had moved under the boat, and suddenly the shark got a hold of me and started pulling me deeper and deeper. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. As the shark pulled me deeper and deeper, I hit him with harpoons. I managed to get several hits in, but suddenly I heard a hissing noise as one of his teeth punctured the oxygen flow to my helmet. I'm too deep to go without oxygen. What am I going to do? I had an idea. If I could time this right, I could ignite the oxygen coming from my helmet and use it like a grenade. Catch this! I threw my helmet and it exploded on impact, killing the shark. There was no time to celebrate though. I couldn't hold my breath forever. I looked around and saw a cave nearby. Maybe there's an air pocket. I swam as my oxygen levels continued to drop, bursting through the wall of water and found the dry ground. Whew, that was way too close. But what am I supposed to do now? On days 27 to 29, I decided my only option was to head deeper into the cave and see what I could find. What I saw next was totally unexpected. Is that... Octopus? Sitting at the bottom of the cave was a giant octopus. As I got closer, he started talking to me. Hello there. I can't help but think you're a little lost. That's one way of putting it. Do you know a way back up to the surface? There's only one way, which is back the way you came. But breathing is the problem, right? All you need is a scuba mask I have. It will give you all the oxygen you need. Great. So, can I have it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Are you going to give it to me? I will. You can help me first. You should have just said that in the first place. What can I do to help? My wife was kidnapped by a horrible giant squid, and I need someone to rescue her. He's hiding out in a sunken pirate ship. I need you to take him out. But don't ask him any questions. He will try to trick you. Okay, I can probably manage that, except for one big problem. Well, what's that? I can't breathe underwater. Oh, yes, yes, that's simple. As you swim toward the ship, you'll see some clams lying along the seafloor. Give them a knock with your fist, and they'll let out oxygen bubbles. And now need to breathe. I really hope you're right about that. I started making my way out of the cave, but stopped to mine all the various ores. That way I'd have more supplies for later. Once I had collected as much as I could, I left the cave and started swimming in the direction of the pirate ship. As my oxygen levels started to run low, I swam up to a clam and gave it a tap. Sure enough, a stream of bubbles came out. Okay, looks like he was right. They didn't teach me that one in SEAL training. As I was starting to swim away though, I felt something brush along my back. It was a school of piranhas. Get your teethy grins away from me. I was so distracted by the fight, I nearly ran out of oxygen and drowned. Luckily, I was able to hit the clam before it was too late. At long last, I managed to fillet the rest of the fish. That was exhausting and it's getting late. I should try and find a cave to rest in. I swam a little further and soon saw a cave along the seafloor. I swam in and saw it had a nice pocket of air. The cave was also full of resources, so I made sure to grab those before settling in for the night. On days 30 to 35, I left the cave and continued to search for the pirate ship, grabbing oxygen from clams along the way. I soon found myself in a colorful coral reef, and eventually saw the pirate ship lodged in the middle. I swam up to the ship and started to take a look around. As far as I could tell, the ship looked deserted. Might as well check the chest for anything good. I opened the crates and found some gold and gunpowder. One of the crates even had an enchanted infinity book inside. Just then, I saw something moving on the other side of the boat. It was the giant squid! Get away from my ship! Oh, someone thinks they're a real tough guy. I swam over to the squid as he hit me with his tentacles, knocking me back. Why'd you kidnap an innocent octopus's wife? The giant squid stopped fighting. Kidnap? Innocent? Wait a second, I think you have the wrong idea. The octopus told me you would try to trick me. Nothing you say can change my mind. Just then, the octopus's wife popped up. Wait, hear us out. My ex-husband was lying to you. Okay, this was definitely a plot twist. What was going on? First things first, though, I had nearly run out of oxygen. I quickly punched a clam as the octopus's wife began to explain. My ex-husband was so evil. He was mean and killed humans for fun. That's where he got that scuba mask he has. My squid friend here helped me to escape. Friend? I mean, yeah, we're friends, but Molly, I thought it was more than that. Not now, Jerry. Look, let's all head back. I think together we can teach Chad a lesson. 
name is Chad? Say no more, let's go. Without delay, we all took off for Chad's cave. We soon arrived after a bit of swimming. I'll go in there and draw him out, and you guys can do your thing. I made my way back inside the cave and talked to Chad. Good news, your wife is just outside and is waiting for you. Oh, good. Well done, well done. I sure hope that nasty to see you. As we swam out of the cave, Jerry was waiting for me. You've messed with her for the last time. Oh, you're still alive? Don't hurt me. I watched as Jerry smacked the octopus and swam away. The guy was squirting ink all over the place. How embarrassing. As those two swam off, Molly headed inside the cave and grabbed a school mask out of the chest. Here you go, Zozo. I think you burned this. She tossed out the mask, which I quickly grabbed and put on. Just in time, too. I was nearly out of oxygen. Thanks, Molly. You guys take it easy down here. On days 36 to 40, I was planning on heading up to the surface, but took a moment to check out the column attached to the ship. This column doesn't look like something the ship ran into. It looks like the column grew and ran into the ship. Something fishy was definitely going on, but I needed to get back up to the ship to talk to the crew. As I climbed aboard, I saw the base was under attack. The sun hasn't set yet. How are zombies attacking now? As I got closer though, I saw these weren't zombies at all. They were some kind of aquatic humanoid monsters. They were much stronger than the zombies too. Look, you guys stink. But more importantly, where did you come from? I was able to keep myself from taking too much damage and noticed that some of them had dropped sapphires. But at long last, the monsters were all defeated. I went and took a closer look at the fence and saw they had broken right through. Looks like we've got some work to do. But before then, I had to get out of the scuba suit. I hung the suit back up and stashed the loot I had found at the base. The next day had rolled around and I decided to upgrade my gear just in case the monsters tried to attack again. I quickly smelted down all the iron I collected, then used that iron to make an anvil. I placed the anvil down, then used the infinity enchantment I had found to enchant my harpoon gun. Now I'll have unlimited ammo. Next up, I had an idea for what I wanted to make with the sapphires the monsters had dropped. I grabbed a hammer and used it to shape the sapphires into a blade. With my gear upgraded, I headed over to talk to Switchblade about how things had been going and fill him in on what I had discovered. It's been rough, to be honest. We had been fighting off wave after wave of monsters. It's a good thing you showed up when you did, because we didn't think we were going to make it. I'm just glad everyone is okay. So what are you thinking for our next move? Switchblade led me outside. Well, as you can see, they were able to break right through our wooden fence. The best bet is to upgrade the wall. we will do well to get a proper HQ set up. Sounds like a plan. Let's gather some supplies and get right to it. On days 41 to 43, we had finished gathering the supplies we needed, so I started by tearing down one of the old planes on the deck. The new fence was going to be a bit bigger, so we'd need a little bit of extra room. The plane was soon cleared, and I got to work building a metal security fence across the deck. In addition to the fence, I also put up a guard tower so we could have some leverage on any attacking monsters. They would have a heck of a time getting through this. After I finished the fence, I got to work on the headquarters. Having a sturdy building to store and plan from was going to be much more reliable than something a horde of zombies could tear through in a matter of minutes. Once the exterior was complete, I went ahead and filled the inside with everything we were going to need. I decided to get to work on the next part of the statue. I only had a little bit of materials on hand, so I just did a little bit of work on the one side. Just as I was finishing up, I heard a loud crash outside. What in the world was that? I ran outside and took a look over the edge of the ship. A submarine had crashed into the side of the boat. Where did this come from? As I was looking down, the sub's hatch opened and a dazed officer stuck their head out. Hello down there. Can we help you? She looked around confused. I think so. She didn't seem like she was all right, so I quickly jumped off the side of the boat, swam over to the sub, and climbed aboard next to her. Where did you come from? Sorry, I'm a little frazzled. My name is Alice. I've been tracking this ship for weeks without rest. Funny enough, it wasn't until I fell asleep that I finally found it. Well here, let's get on board and we can chat more. We jumped into the water and climbed up the boat. Once we were on the deck, we continued our conversation. So why were you tracking the ship? Some time ago, I was searching for an ancient artifact. The same one that the captain of the ship came into contact with recently. He beat me to it, but I don't think he understood what it was. I've been desperately trying to find this ship. Not because the artifact is valuable, which it is, but because we need to destroy it, and I'm the only one who knows how to do that. Yeah, you're telling me. That artifact seems to be the source of all the problems here. We're more than happy to try and destroy it. Just then, the seal flopped over. Zozo, something about this all seems off to me. What do you know? You're just a seal. I'm a trained submariner. Yeah, a trained submariner who just crashed their sub. Okay, okay, you two. Calm down. Look, we know there's something weird going on, and this could be a shot to fix it, or at least end it. What do we know about the artifact? Well, the captain probably has it near him, up in the control tower, so we should focus on getting to that. Okay, sounds good. The doors are all locked, but maybe the other sailors know a way around that. I headed over to talk to the sailors. There was good news. There was actually a master key to the entire ship. The bad news, though, was that the key was most likely in the armory, deep in the belly of the boat. Well, I figured I'd have to go back in there at some point. We'll get this done.
On days 44 to 49, I headed back down into the ship. As I navigated the curving passageways, I could hear the shuffling of feet ahead of me. There we go. The zombies came straight around the corner, but they were no match for my new sapphire sword. I was able to pretty quickly overpower these guys, but how would it hold up against a group of those monsters? With the zombies out of the way, I headed deeper still into the ship. Soon I found myself in a room full of different internal mechanisms. I could hear something in the room ahead. It sounds like more zombies, but something is different. I poked my head through the doorway and could see one of those monsters leaving a group of zombies around. Is he commanding them? I very quickly found the answer to that question because the monster caught sight of me, let out a growl, and all the zombies charged. Don't listen to him! He's the new one, not me! I tried to get at the monster, but the zombies moved almost like they were protecting me. I had no choice but to fight them off first. Get back, you flesh heads! Soon enough, the zombies were all destroyed, and I was able to engage the monster. He was strong, but he couldn't do much all by himself. Soon enough, he was taken down too. A familiar rush of adrenaline came pouring in, and I could feel myself getting stronger. I suddenly gained four more hearts, and was promoted to a petty officer. More health and strength. Nice! On days 50 to 53, I kept making my way to the armory. Soon, I could see the door, but outside of it was another one of those monsters. It was walking down the hallway behind a larger group. What are these guys doing? I should follow them and see where they're headed. I should probably give these guys a name too. I'll call them blobs. These blobs certainly seem to have some level of intelligence. They weren't like the zombies who would mindlessly attack anyone nearby. The blobs seemed to be up to something. I followed them through the winding hallways and even had some close calls. I think they may have suspected they were being followed as I had to duck into a side room to avoid being detected at times. Feels like we've gone down several floors. We've got to be close to the bottom of the ship at this point. Soon enough, I followed them into a room and couldn't believe what I was seeing. There were several blobs roaming around, but more concerning were the cages hanging from the ceiling. There's sailors in some of those cages, but something is turning them into zombies. That something must have had to do with what I saw on the ground. There was a massive hole with pink goo dripping into it. This must be where the column meets the ship. So the column must be hollow. It's a tunnel of some sort. Before I could get any closer though, one of the blobs noticed me and attacked. I managed to fight him off, but could see I had all of their attention now. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't want to end up in one of those cages. I booked it out of there. On days 54 to 57, I was running for my life. The blobs were hot on my tail, but I was starting to put distance between us. I'm not going to be your next experiment. I was a pretty speedy guy and was able to get away. Oh, what was I doing again? Oh yeah, the armory. Soon enough, I found my way back to the armory and headed inside. Oh man, why didn't they tell me about this place before? The armory was full of all kinds of good stuff. I walked up to the center table and took a look at everything. Glittering in the middle of the table was a brand new shotgun. Oh ho ho, now we're backing. The blobs won't want to meet me around a dark corner. The next thing I picked up was the master key. Now I'll be able to get into any part of the ship. I checked out some of the crates and managed to scrounge up some ammo for the shotgun. Then I took a look at the armor hanging up. Is this special ops gear? It is! I pulled it off the rack and put it on. With everything equipped, I saw that my armor was maxed out. Oh yeah, now I'm ready for a fight. After I had grabbed everything else I could, I headed out back to the flight deck. On days 58 to 62, I arrived back on the flight deck and went to talk to the SEAL about everything I had seen. Hey bud, you'll never guess what I found down there. Oh no, don't tell me. More monsters? Even worse, that column you saw is a tunnel of some kind, and they're turning the sailors into zombies. Just then, Alice walked up. They're probably just summoning an ancient god. Ancient god? What? Oh yes, the ancient artifact is like a beacon that calls for the disciples of the god Aquino to begin preparing for his arrival. You can't be serious. Oh, I am. By harvesting the souls of men, they give him the power to travel from his prison below, up and into our world. It's incredible. Incredible? Don't you mean horrible? Um, yes, it's horrible. Um, by incredible, I just mean, like, insane. How do you know all of this, anyway? Oh, uh, I read about it in a book. I'm a very learned explorer. Right. I was going to have to keep my eye on Alice, but in the meantime, I thought it'd be best to get to work on the statue. If we couldn't stop Akuno from coming to this world, at least there'd be an intimidating statue he'll have to look at. Yeah, I'm not feeling too good about it at all, but at least the next phase of the statue was complete. On days 63 to 66, I decided to dive into the water and try and get more supplies for the statue. I swam deep and saw just what I was looking for. Perfect, I'll just collect these and be on my way. I took out my pickaxe and quickly mined up everything I was going to need. It was hard work mining underwater, but having a mask that let me breathe made everything much easier. Speaking of which, I should check in on Molly and Jerry. Maybe they noticed anything with the tunnel. As I swam near the cave, Jerry came swimming over and Molly came out to greet me. Hey guys, I was just checking in. Have you noticed anything weird about the tunnel over there? We were hoping you'd come by. We've been noticing some strange 
strange vibrations coming out of it. What's going on? Well, it's bad news, unfortunately. Apparently, there's an ancient god ritual in the works. There's an ancient artifact that we need to destroy to stop it, but I have no idea what I'm going to be up against. I think I know something that could help, actually. The pirate ship we were living in before had remnants of something that looked very similar to the tunnel here. I think it may have had something to do with why the boat sunk. Oh, no way! Yeah, and there were some books buried in the crates. I can't read, but maybe they will contain some helpful information. That's an awesome tip! I'll go take a look. I took off in the direction of the ship and arrived soon after. Before I head in there, though, have you hit the sub button yet? The more subs we have, the stronger our navy will be. On days 67 to 70, I swam down into the pirate ship and decided to take a look around. I grabbed some gold and gunpowder from the crates before opening a crate that contained the captain's journal. I opened it up and started to read. Day 75, we spotted, spotted an island full of zombies. Lost a lot of men fighting on this island, but it was worth it, I think. This captain's crew had to fight zombies too. They must have been near the artifact. I'll keep reading. We found this strange, mysterious book. So the artifact must be a book. I'm not comfortable holding it, so I gave it to one of my mates. I couldn't believe what I was reading. But why did their boat sink? Did the blobs attack them too? I read on. Day 78. There is a submarine behind us. We are under attack, taking on water. A submarine took them out. I've got a sneaking suspicion I know who was driving it. I better get back to the ship. Alice knows more than she's letting us think. I swam out of the ship, but before I could get anywhere, I was attacked by Chad. I'll make you pay for tricking me. Tricking you? It's not my fault you're a jerk. Chad was surprisingly strong, but he didn't know I had gotten stronger too. Jerry should have finished you when he had the chance. I swung my sword and finished him off. He wasn't going to be bugging anyone now. On day 71 to 74, I returned back to the ship and climbed back up on board. As I climbed aboard, Alice came running up to me. You're back. I'm so happy to see you're okay. Did you find anything interesting? I wanted to confront her about everything, but we didn't know what she was trying to do. There was still a chance her intentions were good, even if she took down a ship. No, unfortunately, I didn't find anything. Looks like our best bet is to try and confront the captain. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear it. Best of luck fighting the captain. Just remember, grab the artifact and bring it to me, so I can destroy it. I headed over to the command tower and unlocked the door of the master key. As I entered the tower, I was immediately attacked by a group of blobs. These guys have been here so close to our base, I had no idea. Using my shotgun, I was able to mow them down pretty quick. They didn't stand a chance against a ranged weapon. I then made my way to the next level and was met by another pack of blobs. It was a tight space, so they managed to get some hits in, but by using the table, I was able to get a little bit of space. Them up. That was a close one. Now to find the captain. Maybe these guys were just holding him prisoner. On day 75 to 78, I reached the top floor and saw the captain looking out over the base. There was a strange glow about him, but he looked okay. Captain, I'm here to risk. Oh no. The captain had turned around, and I could see he was mutated like the other sailors. The glow must have been coming from the artifact. Akuno will return. Akuno is master. Akuno will rule this world. Captain, you've got to break free. We can stop him. The captain was too far gone. He wasn't hearing a word I was saying. Akuno requires your soul. Just then, the captain pulled his gun and started firing. No, I don't want to fight you. I didn't have a choice. If I didn't fight, he would kill me and use me to attack all my friends. The captain was a good shot, but I was a trained seal. Sorry, but this is gonna hurt. I noticed that the captain had started throwing some kind of energy ball at me. It must be a power he got from Akuno. We can't allow this kind of dark magic in our world. Hang on to your hat. I'm sending you to the underworld. I took aim and blasted my shotgun one final time, sending the captain to oblivion. After he disappeared, I saw a book laying on the ground. It had to be the artifact, the Necronomicon. Now that just sounds evil. I'm not opening this thing. I can't risk getting sucked into all this madness. Let's see if Alice can actually destroy this thing, or if she's up to something else entirely. On day 79 to 84, I made my way down the tower and headed into the HQ building to meet with Alice. She could barely contain her excitement when she saw me walking up. Zozo, you must have it. I can feel its energy. Quickly, give it to me. Hang on a second. I can't give this to you until you explain to me exactly how you plan to destroy it. Don't worry about that. Just give me the book. Suddenly, a glow appeared around Alice. She was possessed by the book, too. Alice leapt forward and tried to grab the book from me. Alice, get a hold of yourself. This book will destroy the world. Akuno promised me power to protect his book. I won't let you stop me. Looks like she was pretty determined, but the seal and I were ready. Pull it! The seal flipped a switch on the wall, which dropped a cage on Alice, trapping her inside. Now listen, you're going to have to stay here until we can figure out how to destroy this thing. You'll never destroy it. The only thing that can destroy it is Akuno himself. You'll never win. Akuno himself? I ran outside to chat with the seal. Well, it's not looking good. I think the only option is to enter the tunnel and find this Akuno. I'll have to try and trick him into destroying the book somehow. It looks like it's our only option. The seal agreed. 
On days 85 to 89, I started tearing down the security fence so I could replace it with an even better one. If I failed in my mission, it meant Akuno was headed for this world, and my friends were going to need a fighting chance. After a bit, the new fence was finished. I also needed to finish the statue, so I dove off the ship to go and mine out the remaining supplies I would need. I swam to the bottom and found a deposit of materials I could use. I mined them out, then brought them back to the ship. Then I headed into my camp to grab some supplies to upgrade my weapons. First, I crafted a workbench and set that down. Then, by using the workbench, I crafted some additional shells for my shotgun. To finish up, I then crafted a stock for it as well. Well, I'm about as powered up as I can be. Now I just need to finish that statue, and we'll be on our way. On days 90 to 94, I got started on the last section of the statue. By now, I'm sure you can tell who it is. So, what do you think? Did you guess it correctly? He's a big hero of mine, and hopefully he can inspire the next batch of recruits. With the statue complete, I headed down to have a quick chat with the SEAL. Hey buddy, I just wanted to say thanks for all your help, and here's something to show my appreciation. You're an honorary Navy SEAL too. On days 95 to 97, I headed out of the base, through the security tower, and made my way toward the hole. This could be the last time I ever see the light of day. I descended into the boat and started making my way through the ship corridors, and was immediately attacked by zombies and blobs. Whoa, these guys were ready for me. Kuno must know I'm coming for him. By using the shotgun, I blasted my way through the first level of the boat. I was having some close calls, but managed to get through relatively unharmed. These poor sailors, I don't want to hurt them, but they give me no choice. I continued down to the next level and started facing off against more blobs. Be gone, fish face! These monsters were something I could never get used to. I had to banish them from this world. Soon I had made it to the lowest level of the ship and was getting close to the tunnel room. As I approached, I saw another blob. He was bigger than the others and had a strong glow around him. He must be their leader. By using my sapphire sword, I managed to get some hits in, but he was hitting back too. Oof, yeah, this guy is way more powerful than the other ones. He was using a trident that was stronger than anything I had faced yet. It might be time to try something new. I pulled out my shotgun and worked on creating some distance between us, but it was difficult in tight space. Get a load of this. I kept firing away and finally all of the zombies were gone. I kept on him until at long last, he was defeated. As he disappeared, I got that familiar surge of adrenaline and grew in size. And check it out, now I have 20 hearts. Feeling better than ever, I entered the room and was immediately sworn. I started fighting off all of the enemies, but there was a lot of them. I had no choice but to hurry and jump into the hole. Here goes nothing. I jumped into the hole, falling for what felt like forever. But eventually I hit the ground with a thud and blacked out. On day 98, I woke up laying at the bottom of the hole. Oh, that didn't feel so good. But where am I? I took in my surroundings and saw I had fallen into some kind of deep cavern. Just ahead, there is a portal. That must take me to Akuno. I don't like the look of that, but I know that with support from you and my friends, we can do anything. I took a deep breath and ran headfirst into the portal. On day 99, I appeared in what looked to be an entirely different dimension. Whoa, this place is insane. It's almost like I'm underwater, but I'm not. Up ahead of me, I could see a huge otherworldly temple. That had to be where Akuno lived. With my gun in hand, I ran forward into the temple. As I ran into the building, I could see Akuno waiting for me. Akuno, you thought you could come to my world and destroy everyone, but instead it's me coming to yours to destroy you. Akuno didn't seem surprised at all. <laughs> Can't me off guard. Please, you've been a pawn in my plan this entire time, just like all the other foolish humans. What did he mean, a pawn? That book can allow me to influence anyone who reads it, but I can't travel to your dimension without it. And now you've brought it straight to me, just in time, too. I understand my minions have nearly completed preparing an army for you. Why are you doing this? What good does destroying another world do for you? Man to this world, but for what? Not a soul roams here, and I'm kept bound by the limitations of this flesh. A human soul gives me freedom I can't get elsewhere, so I will take the souls of Earth, starting with you. If you want this book, you're gonna have to pry it off of me. That's just what I intend on doing. I immediately opened fire with my shotgun. It didn't seem to be doing anything. Pathetic. Your human weapons are no match for my magic. You'll never break my enchantments. I fired a few more shots, but he was right. This wasn't doing anything. Just then, I noticed there were two purple orbs hanging from the ceiling. They had an almost lifelike quality about them. Let's see what you think about this. I opened fire on one of the orbs, breaking it open and causing it to explode. No! He didn't like that and started attacking me. Clearly this was doing something. Ho <laughs> ho, not so clever after all, are we? I fired on the other orb, which caused it to explode as well. You will pay for this. I fired off a few shots at him again. This time I could tell it was hurting. Well, let's see how you handle this. 
There was a flash of lightning and two blobs appeared at the end of them, attacking me. Jeez, you can summon these guys at will? There's no way we can let them into our world. The blobs converged on me and I quickly finished them off with my shotgun. As soon as I had defeated them, Kuno summoned two more. Dude, knock it off. This is just getting annoying. Kuno launched his purple fireballs at me as I continued to pick off more blobs and land shots on him. As I hit him more and more, I could tell he was getting desperate. Foolish mortal, you have only seen a fraction of my power. Suddenly, a ring of fire appeared around me and I was hit by lightning. He wasn't joking, things were starting to get serious. Uh, yeah, okay, that one is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I kept on him while trying to dodge his lightning attacks, but let me tell you, dodging lightning is as hard as you think it would be. Looks like it's the end for you, Zoto. This couldn't be it, but then I remembered the secret to defeating him was destroying the book. I knew what I needed to do. Just then, a ring of fire appeared around me, and I jumped back, throwing the book out. The lightning struck the book, destroying it. No, no! Akuno erupted in an explosion and was destroyed. I did it! I heard some rolling thunder, and suddenly a bolt of lightning came out of the sky, teleporting me away. What now? On day 100, I appeared at the top of the hole, back on the ship. Inside of the cage in front of me, I saw one of the zombies start to change. But this time, he changed back into a sailor. Oh, hello? What's going on? Hang on, I'll help you. I jumped up to the cage and busted the sailor out. There were several other cages around the room, so I hurried and broke out all of the other trapped sailors as well. As I did so, I explained everything to them. They were all pretty confused, but I led them up to the flight deck so they could get some rest. With the sailors all safe in their bunks, I met back up with the seal and switchblade. You did it, Zozo. On behalf of the crew, I can't thank you enough. Alice is feeling better too. Just then, Alice walked up. The seal was right. She was looking normal. Oh, Zozo, I feel so awful for everything I've done. But I'm so glad you were here to save the day. Our seal friend here and I are going to go adventuring together. This time, I'm not going to be reading any scary books. I'm just glad everything is back to normal. And thanks for everyone's help. I can't wait to see where our adventures take us next. On day one, I spawned in as an elemental shark in the middle of a tropical rainforest. And before I could understand what any of that even meant, I was surrounded by a gang of terrifying fire elementals, led by a massive magma golem. It looks like we got him, boss. The last elemental who wouldn't bend the knee for you. What? I feel like I'm missing something here. Everyone laughed at me for saying that, and it definitely didn't make me feel good. The magma golem was the only one who remained steely and serious. I think I'm missing something too. I'm missing the part where you swore absolute loyal to me, Magnus the Magma Golem, Lord of the Elementals. Who made you Lord of the Elementals? I've never even heard of you. I made myself the Lord, and if you don't bow to me, I'll make you into shock elemental sushi. I think I'd rather make myself scarce. Before the magma golem or his fire elementals could attack me, I used one of my elemental powers to warp out of there and run away as fast as I could. As if this day wasn't stressful enough, as I was running away, I got incredibly hungry and didn't have any food. Could this get any worse? The only food I could find in the tropical rainforest was some apples, but it was being guarded by an angry earth elemental. Would you be down to share one of those apples with me? No, these apples can only be enjoyed by servants of Magnus, Lord of the Elementals. Is there anyone around here who doesn't work for this guy? I fought the Earth Elemental with my bare fins until I gave up and ran away. Finally, I was able to at least enjoy an apple. This is the one nice thing that's happened to me today. What's going on here? On day two, I kept running through the tropical forest until I was convinced I'd lost the magma golem and his nasty gang of fire elementals. If there's one thing I can be sure of in this crazy, confusing world, it's that those guys are bad news. When I felt safe, I punched down one of the trees and made myself a wooden pickaxe. And with that, it wasn't hard to mine down into the ground and collect myself enough stone blocks to get started on a base. I think after all this craziness, I've really earned a roof over my head tonight. I used the stone and wood I collected to start building a base with a basic bedroom and living area, complete with a sofa and a couch. I also made myself a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. It wasn't much, but at least it was something. As long as that awful magma golem doesn't come and try to burn it down. But I soon wished I hadn't said that, because a few of the magma golem's fire elementals came blazing through the forest towards me. You thought you could escape us, didn't you, kid? Nobody escapes Magnus or his minions. Sooner or later, you're gonna give in to his demands or be destroyed. But why would I want to work for a guy like him? What is he even planning? You're not important enough to know that. Come on, boys, let's torch him. The fire elementals came for me, and I used my stone sword to fight them back until they were nothing more than ashes. 
I still don't understand what's happening here. What is this Magnus guy planning? And what part do I play in all of this? You better watch to the end if you want to help me find out. On day three, I decided it was time to investigate what was going on. After all, if I didn't know the truth, I was at a disadvantage. I started exploring around the tropical rainforest until I found someone who wanted to talk to me about it. And that someone just so happened to be a scary looking monster mushroom named Fungo. To my surprise, he was friendly. Please, Fungo, tell me about what the deal is with Magnus, the so-called Lord of the Elements. He's been hassling me ever since I spawned here. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. You're a shock elemental, right? And as his name suggests, Magnus, the Lord of the Elementals, wants to get control of as many of the Elementals as he can. And if you want to get them too, chances are the only way you're going to be able to do it is by taking the fight to him. Defeat Magnus? Maybe if I get stronger I could do that, but why? I don't understand why he's doing this. Well, take a seat on that log over there, buddy because that's a much longer and wilder story. So I did as I was told and sat down, but nothing could prepare me for what I was about to hear. From day four to day five, I sat down and listened to the story Fungo the Monster Mushroom told me about Magnus the Magma Golem. First, you need to understand that golems are always created by villagers. They are not natural creatures, and as such, they are completely at odds with the natural elements of the world. But when Magnus was created, he learned to hate his own unnaturalness. He was so frustrated by it that he wanted to conquer the elements and make them work for him. One by one, he subdued the fire elementals, the earth elementals, the air elementals, and the water elementals. Through their allegiance, he may be able to control all the forces of the natural world. And in order to defeat him before he becomes too powerful, you'll need to master all four of the elements and gain their powers. Oh, just like in Avatar The Last Airbender. Wait, you've seen Avatar? Sweet, that's gonna make all of this a lot easier to understand. Be careful out there, Zozo. If you can get strong enough and gain all these powers, you can save us all. But to help with the learning process, you'll need to find a mentor. Do you know where I can find one? Nope. Good luck. From day six to day eight, with all the new information that Fungo the Monster Mushroom had given me stewing around in my head, I started making my way back to my base. So, I need to find a mentor. How can I track one down? It's not like they have a directory website. But my frustration and self-pity was interrupted by seeing an innocent swamp pig being picked on by more of those evil fire elementals. Please, guys, leave me alone. I'm just doing my daily exercise. <laughs> Little piggy's trying to exercise. Hilarious. We can help you warm up. Oh, yeah. We'll fry your bacon. <laughs> These are extremely insensitive jokes, guys. Please leave me alone. But I knew they'd never leave that poor swamp pig alone. Not unless I made them. That's why I pulled out my stone sword and ran in to fight them off. Leave that innocent pig alone, you meanies! It didn't take me long to defeat them all and rescue the swamp pig from a fiery doom. Needless to say, he was relieved. Thank you, kind stranger. I'm Sammy, Sammy the Swamp Pig. You have done me a great kindness today, and I'll never forget it. No problem, Sammy. I'm Zozo, by the way. Say, do you have any idea where I might find a mentor? I really need one to help me save the world. Well, I did hear rumors about a great teacher who lived near water somewhere, but that's all I know. Still, I want to help you, Zozo. I really owe you one. How about you come back to my base? I could really use some allies right now. I led Sammy the Swamp Pig back into my base and started building a new room in my base for him to stay in. And make sure you keep watching until the end, because the craziest parts are yet to come. From day 9 to day 10, I found a huge underground cavern in the tropical rainforest where I could search for rarer materials. The deeper and darker I descended in, the more veins of iron ore I found. I mined and collected the iron ore and then constructed a furnace underground to smelt into iron ingots. Now it's time to make myself some awesome new equipment. I made a set of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. And not a second too soon, as I heard something terrifying skittering around in the dark. 
I turned and saw a giant skulk scorpion crawling towards me, looking like it was ready to attack. And it turned out that it actually was. I tried to attack it with my iron sword, but it didn't seem to have much of an effect on the monster, which was as strong and fast as it was angry. In the end, I needed to use my location warping ability to zap out of there and run deeper into the darkness of the underground cavern. Can't see how this would ever end badly. From day 11 to day 12, all I could do was try to hide deeper in the underground cavern and hope that the Skulk Scorpion didn't find me down there. How am I going to save the world from a powerful magma golem if I can't even defeat a nasty underground bug? Deep in the dark, my greatest enemy wasn't the Skulk Scorpion or even Magnus, the Lord of the Elementals. It was just pure boredom. So when I found a dusty old book, you can only imagine how relieved I was. I certainly never expected that this book would contain the secret to Magnus's rise to power. It was filled with strange Latin text, but then I opened the book to a section called The Three Enforcers. It described three terrifying and powerful golems who worked for Magnus, the Bone Golem, the Diamond Golem, and the Bedrock Golem. These three golems were vital for keeping all the elementals in line. And if I was able to defeat all three of the enforcer golems, Magnus's control over elementals would probably collapse. Now I know what I need to do. If I defeat the three enforcers, defeating Magnus afterwards would be easy. But I was celebrating a little too loudly. Suddenly, a vicious fire salamander, a powerful underworld creature, ran towards me. He was a tough mob to defeat since he shot flames in me. He had something that looked like an organic turret protruding from his back. A truly bizarre and scary mob, but with the knowledge of what I needed to do fueling me, I was able to do it. And this gave me enough XP to level up, becoming a bigger, stronger elemental shark with 18 hearts and the ability to breathe fire. Looks like I've mastered one element, three to go. Keep watching to see what I evolve into next. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to my base, bigger and stronger than ever before. And when I was back, I saw that Sammy the Swamp Pig had made an awesome addition to the base while I was gone, a whole new floor. Whoa, Sammy, this room looks so cool. What exactly is it? Look, it's a lounge area, Zozo. You need to stay relaxed if you want to be in harmony with the four elements. An excellent idea, Sammy. Do you have any news on where I might be able to find the mentor I've been searching for too? I've heard of some strange activity near a pond deep in the tropical rainforest. Maybe that has something to do with it. On Sammy's advice, I ventured out deeper into the tropical rainforest until I found the pond and what looked like a crimson wizard waiting outside it. Stay back, Elemental. I will not serve your master. He fired an energy blast at me that took off a few of my hearts and prepared to fire another. Wait, you don't understand. I'm an elemental, but I don't work for Magnus. I'm trying to defeat him. I'm just looking for a mentor that will help train me to stop him. Oh, I see. Sorry about firing an energy blast at you there, old chap. You can't be too careful these days with Magnus and his minions around. It's okay, I understand. So can you mentor me, Mr. Wizard? I'm afraid that isn't my area of expertise, but I also wish to stop the diabolical Magnus. You and I can work together to make that a reality. It never hurts to have magic on your side, I guess. Come on back to my base with me. Let's work together. Lead the way, Elemental Shark. I set off back towards my base with one more ally in tow. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base with the Crimson Wizard. Because Sammy the Swamp Pig figured I might be returning with a mentor, he had already built a room for the Crimson Wizard. My base is practically becoming a hotel. I should start charging people. I'd be happy to pay. This room looks wonderful. Before you get too comfortable, Crimson Wizard, I need some advice. Do you have any idea where I should go next in my quest to master the elements and take on Magnus? Good question, Zozo. Personally, I would suggest the Mojave Desert. To master all the elements, you must first experience them all. That sounds like a good idea to me. Time to go. After a couple days of traveling, I'd reached the Mojave Desert and started searching around for any clues as to what I needed to do next. The last thing I expected was to run into a talking desert cat. Hey, little kitty, do you have any idea what I can do to help defeat Magnus, Lord of the Elementals? Meow, yeah. Magnus? You mean the magma golem? I think some of his henchmen are around here, just a little further west in this very desert. Maybe go defeat them, and I'll see whatever information I can provide afterwards. That's so convenient. Thank you, Desert Cat. 
From day 20 to day 22, following the cat's instructions, I went further west into the Mojave Desert. It didn't take me long to find a gang of rowdy air elementals who were just itching for a fight. Hey, look, it's that elemental shark who defied the orders of Lord Magnus. Yep, that's me, but I'm not here for you small fries. That'd be a waste of my time. Small fries? Oh, buddy, you are gonna regret saying that. They flew over to attack me, but I was ready. With my iron sword, I cut them down and defeated each one of them until I was the last one standing, or so I thought. Turned out, one of Magnus's head enforcers, the Bone Golem, had been sneaking up behind me. I turned just as the Bone Golem hit me, taking off a shocking number of hearts. Immediately, I was fighting for my life, striking him with my iron sword, but it wasn't having any effect. He was so confident, he started throwing his own bones at me. I needed to pull out the big guns and use my elemental powers on this nasty overgrown skeleton. Fire breath, go! I breathed a powerful jet of flames onto the bone golem, finally defeating him. And with that, I was a third of the way to bringing down Magnus and his empire of evil. From day 23 to day 26, I went back to tell the desert cat about my success. Hey, little kitty, I found those henchmen, and I kicked their butts. Well, that's great news. Those jerks kept making crazy wind and messing up my fur. Now I can nap in peace without worrying about any air elementals bothering me. So, what can you tell me about Magnus, and how can I defeat him? Well, Magnus doesn't like to fight his own fights. He prefers to have his henchmen take care of that for him. So if you can defeat all of his elemental goons, he won't have anyone left to fight for him, and he'll have to face you himself. I guess I just need to make sure I'm strong enough when the time comes. Meow, that sounds about right. Oh, before I forget, maybe you can use this. The cat gave me a potion of power. Thanks, I can definitely use this. Glad to hear it. Now scram, it's my nap time, and I just found the perfect sunny spot. You got it. I left the cat and continued walking through the desert until I found a new area. When I got there, I was jumped by some earth elementals. Say, it's the wise guy who thinks he can defy Lord Magnus. Let's get him, boys. Not if I get you first. Fire breath, go! I blew a blast of fire at the earth elementals and followed it up with an attack with my iron sword. Pretty soon, all but one of the earth elementals was defeated. Wait, if you let me go, I can give you some information. Oh yeah? Yeah, Lord Magnus's headquarters. It's guarded by earth, air, and water elementals. Is that helpful? Yeah, get out of here. He ran away, and I took the moment of victory to drink my potion of power. When I did, I gained 24 hearts, evolving into an even bigger version of myself. And I gained the earth ability. I can shoot an earth charge that leaves behind a pile of dirt on the ground. Looks like I just mastered earth. Two down, two to go. From day 27 to day 31, I headed back to my base. On the way there, I passed the pond again. There was a diamond golem there, waiting for me. He attacked me, and I tried to fight back, but he was way too strong. In the end, I had to run away before he dealt me too much damage. Oh, that was a close one. I was scared he'd chase after me, but finally I made it back to my base, safe and sound. Wow, Zozo, look at you. You're so big and strong. Indeed, your stature is most impressive. Thanks, guys, but I'm not done yet. I've still got two elements left to master, and I need to get way stronger if I'm going to defeat Magnus. Still, you must take time to celebrate how far you have already come. Speaking of progress, I have a sense that there is something useful to you waiting at a nearby location, the Rainbow Beach. Then I'd better get going and see what it is. From day 32 to day 35, I traveled to the Rainbow Beach to see what the wizard might have sensed out there. I sure wish magic would be more specific. Oh well, I guess that's just how magic is. As I was looking around, I spotted an iron golem up ahead. Hey there, do you know anything about Magnus? Don't you ever say that name to me! How dare you bring him up in my presence! Oh wait, I, I didn't mean to offend you! Before I could explain, he attacked me! I drew my sword and fought back, but he was really strong! Turns out though, so was I! After fighting for a while, it became pretty clear that we were evenly matched. Please, let's stop this and just talk! You're lucky I'm getting tired. Fine, talk. 
I get the feeling you don't like Magnus much. Don't like him? That's an understatement. We used to be best friends a long time ago. One day, though, he started getting obsessed with the elements. He wanted to control them, all of them. And when I tried to argue with him, elementals think they're so great. Huh. See how great they think they are when I find a way to control every element. What's wrong with you having one specialty? All I do is iron, but you don't see me complaining. That's because you're a loser, and I don't need to spend my time with losers. If you're not with me, you're against me. He knocked me out and left. I never saw him again. Pretty soon, I started hearing about what he was getting up to, and I realized that the friend I used to know was gone. His jealousy and hunger for power turned him into a villain. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to master all the elements too, but it's so I can beat him and stop him from hurting people. If that's true, then that is a noble goal. I wish you luck, Mr. Shark. Thanks. The name's Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to the tropical rainforest. I really need to upgrade my armor. Let's see what I can find here. If armor upgrades you do seek, then it is to me that you should speak. Who's there? And why are you rhyming? A monster mushroom jumped out from behind a tree. Sorry, when I get nervous, I talk in rhymes. I know where you can get some upgrades. Lord Magnus's base is empty right now, and there are plenty of supplies to be found in there. It's not like he deserves them. You might as well take them. Sounds good to me, but where's his base? In the swamp surrounded by lava. Do me a favor, though. If you see a big, mean fire elemental running with a gang of other fiery jerks, would you defeat him for me? He tried to hurt me, and I'd rather he not get a chance to try again. You got it. Thanks for the help. Following the monster mushroom's directions, I managed to make my way to the swamps and Magnus's base. From day 40 to day 43, I fought my way into Magnus's base. There was only a few wither skeleton guards, and it was easy to beat them. Then I ran inside. Jeez, this place really suits the guy. It looks as mean as he is. I didn't have much time to look around because the diamond golem from earlier was inside. Uh-oh, this guy again. I've got to do a better job this time. I started with my fire breath, then followed it up with a sword attack. It was pretty tough, and I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it. But finally, I was able to defeat him. When the diamond golem fell, he dropped a whole bunch of diamonds. This is just what I need. Now I can go back to the base and upgrade my gear. I grabbed all the diamonds. Now I've got to get out of here before Magnus gets back. I may be a lot stronger than I used to be, but I'm still not ready to face him. Maybe with some upgraded armor and weapons, though, I'll be closer to my goal. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled back to my base and got to work on upgrading my armor and weapons. Using all of the diamonds I got from that diamond golem, I was able to craft a diamond pickaxe, a diamond sword, and some diamond armor. Awesome, look at all this stuff. I feel more powerful already. Okay, back to exploring. I need to see what else I can do to improve and work toward mastering those last two elements. I headed out into the rainforest and started exploring. As I did, I came across a group of fire elementals. They didn't see me at first, but I could hear them. You guys remember that loser mushroom that got away from us before? I think I know where we can find him and finish the job. Nice, he was so pathetic. <laughs> Let's go get him. That's the fire elemental he was talking about. If I fight and defeat these guys, he won't have to worry about them anymore. Wait, there's some shocky freak listening to us. That's the guy the boss told us about. Yep, and I'm here to kick your butts. Using my new diamond sword, I was able to defeat those fire elementals in no time. This new gear sure is great. I can't wait to see the look on Magnus's face when he realizes I'm finally strong enough to take him down. But I can't get ahead of myself. I gotta focus on mastering water and air. Time to get moving. From day 50 to day 53, I traveled into the Red Rock Highlands to seek out new ways to master the elements. I feel like the Highlands can teach me air stuff, right? That seems right. Or maybe water. Is there water here? As I explored, I came across an open book lying on the ground. Inside it said, I'm gentle enough to wash your hair, light enough to fly through the sky, strong enough to crack rocks. 
What am I? That doesn't make any sense. How can one thing wash hair, fly in the air, and break rocks? I don't get it. It took me a little while to think about it, but suddenly, it came to me. Wait a second, it's water! That's right, Zozo. An earth elemental jumped out at me. Gets you smarter than you look. Too bad you'll never get a chance to master water because Lord Magnus sent me to take you out. Out to dinner? No, out of this world. Oh, oh no. I got my diamond sword ready and started swinging. I followed it up with some fire breath and the earth elemental crumbled. After the fight, I could feel myself getting bigger and stronger. I'm evolving again. As I got stronger, I gained more hearts. Now I have 35 of them. I also gained the ice blast ability. I can freeze enemies in place with this. I guess I finally mastered water. Only one more to go. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to my base. The Crimson Wizard had a surprise for me. He built some protective walls around the base while I was gone. As a token of appreciation for letting me stay at your home rent free, I thought I might work on our defenses a little bit. These walls look really nice. I feel safer already. Thanks. No problem. Now I'm feeling pretty good, but I know I need to get stronger and master the fourth and final element. I need some help. I wonder if there's anyone who can mentor me. I looked around the base for ideas, but as awesome as my new friends were, none of them would be able to teach me about fighting. Wait a second, that iron golem I met before was really tough and cool. I should go ask him if he can help me. I returned to the place where I met the iron golem and sure enough, he was there. Hey, it's me, Zozo, remember me? I do. How is your quest to master the elements and defeat Magnus going? I've got three out of four down, but I still need to get stronger. Would you train me? Train you to take down Magnus? It would be an honor. Let's get to work, Zozo. From day 58 to day 62, I started my training with the Iron Golem. He set up a wall of blocks for me. You see these blocks? Break them without touching them. Uh, oh, I'll try my best. I used my fire breath to break the blocks. Now try to dodge my attacks. He ran at me and attacked, and I dodged. He had me do a bunch of different challenges and training exercises. I had to run up and down the beach, go out into the water and swim back, and test out all my new powers. By the time I was done, I was exhausted, but I also gained more strength. Sweet! This will help my sword hit even harder. But oh, I haven't mastered air yet. Not yet, but you've made some great progress. I'm proud of you. Thanks for all your help. You've been a great mentor. From day 63 to day 66, I went back to my base. When I got there, I saw a group of water elementals running away from the base. What the? Oh no! They had destroyed my base and destroyed some of the walls. Zozo, help! These miscreants kidnapped the swamp pig! No! I was able to catch up with one of the water elementals and I hit him with my pile of dirt! Tell me where they took my friend or I'll hit you again! Zoinks! Don't do that! They took the pig to Lord Magnus's base! There's a prison cell attached to it! They're gonna throw him in there! And I've gotta get over there too! No time to waste! I need to save my friend! I let the water elemental go and set off toward the Wailing Garth to rescue the Swamp Pig. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled to Magnus's base on a Swamp Pig rescue mission. When I reached the swamps, I saw a big cage in the base. And there was the Swamp Pig trapped inside. Don't worry, I'll get you out of there. Yeah, right. You'll have to go through us first. The water elementals closed in around me, but I had a plan. Maybe I should give you guys the cold shoulder. I fired my ice blast ability at the water elementals, freezing them in place. Then I used my diamond sword to take them out one by one. The last water elemental dropped a key to the cage. Now let's get you free. I used the key to unlock the cage and let the swamp pig out. Thank you, Zozo. I knew you'd save me. What are friends for? Now let's get out of here before Magnus comes back. We ran back to the base together and much to my surprise, when we got back, all the damage was fixed. Wow, who did this? I did. I also added some guard towers so we can see threats coming if any more of Magnus's henchmen decide to attack us again. Awesome, thank you so much. From day 71 to day 74, I wasn't sure what to do next. Can I learn about how to master air? I just don't know. <gasps> Wait a second, there was that skulk scorpion I couldn't fight before. I bet I could beat him now. Maybe then I'll figure out what to do next. With my new plan to fight the Skulk Scorpion, I headed down into the underground cavern. Hello, Mr. Scorpion, are you down here still? 
Sure enough, there it was! The scorpion ran at me and tried to sting me with its stinger! But I fought back with a fire breath and my sword! Then I used my ice blast to freeze it and follow up with the sword to finish it off! I did it! I did it! Hey, look at this! There was a book on the ground! The Book of Exposition! What's it say? The answers you seek lie deeper in the cavern, but there you must face the bedrock golem. Well, who am I to argue with a random book? Let's go! From day 75 to day 78, I followed the instructions from the Book of Exposition and headed deeper into the underground cavern. There, I saw a group of earth elementals and a big bedrock golem behind them. Before I could say anything or attack, the earth elementals spotted me. I've had enough of this clown. Why don't you just give up already? Because what Magnus is doing is wrong, and I can't just stand by and let him get away with it. OK, then don't stand by. Just stand. Die. The Earth Elementals rushed at me, but I was ready for them. I fought them with my diamond sword. Once they were all gone, I turned my attention to the Bedrock Golem. Now it's your turn. He was much tougher than the Earth Elementals. In fact, he was tougher than anyone else I had fought so far. I had to use all of my special abilities to knock him down and out of his misery. That was a relief and good because I felt myself evolving again. My hearts increased to 80 and I gained the ability Whirlwind Attack. I did it, I mastered air, I've gotta tell everyone. From day 79 to day 84, I ran back to the base to deliver the good news. Hey, look, look. I showed my friends my new evolved form and tested out my whirlwind attack for them. Wow, Zozo, you're amazing. Most impressive. So now what should I do? Excellent question, my friend. I believe the answers await us at the Red Rock Highlands. Shall we go there now? Yes, let's go. From day 85 to day 89, the Crimson Wizard and I traveled to the Red Rock Highlands. OK, we're here. Now what? Let me see. I had hoped the Highlands would reveal the truth to me when we arrived, but it remains unclear. Perhaps we should see if we can acquire any additional items that might allow you to upgrade your gear? Sure, why not? Together, we searched the area for cool items. I found some more diamonds and gathered them up. From day 90 to day 94, I was gathering diamonds while the Crimson Wizard headed back to the base. All of a sudden, Magnus appeared behind me. Still haven't given up yet, I see. Nope, and I never will. I finally mastered all the elements, and I'm coming for you. Oh yeah? How are you going to do that from underground? What? What are you talking about? The one element you haven't mastered. The element of surprise. Magnus hit me hard, knocking my diamonds out of my hands. Then he got me again, knocking me out cold. When I woke up, I was in an underground chamber. Oh no, I'm trapped in here. What should I do? In a second, Magnus didn't count on me still having this iron pickaxe. I'll use it to tunnel out of here. I wasn't sure how long I'd been out, so I had to work fast and make up for lost time. I dug faster than I'd ever dug before until I broke through to the surface. Nice try, Magnus, but you can't get rid of me that easily. From day 95 to day 97, I started making my way back to my base. On the way, I was ambushed by a group of Earth Elementals. See, I told the boss burying him wouldn't work. Weeds always grow back. I'm not a weed, I'm an elemental shark. And I'm stronger than you, and I'll prove it. I fought back, and with my mastery of all four elements, it didn't take long for me to beat them. I finished my fight with the whirlwind attack and blew them away. Awesome, okay, no time to celebrate yet. I've gotta get back to the base. On day 98, I finally made my way back to my base. Zozo, where have you been? We were worried about you. Magnus surprised me and trapped me in an underground chamber. I had to dig myself out. Monstrous. That's awful. It's OK. I'm totally fine. I made it back, and we still have time for me to use my mastery of the elements to defeat Magnus and restore peace. It's going to be great. You're right, Zozo. Gee, this sure has been a wild adventure. And to see more adventures like it, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and search Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. Zozo, allow me to accompany you to Magnus's lair. There, you can finally end this nightmare for good. On day 99, the Crimson Wizard walked with me all the way to the swamps and Magnus's base. He couldn't come with me, but I didn't want him to. It was important for me to face Magnus on my own. There, outside the base, were earth elementals, air elementals, and water elementals guarding it. 
I was pretty nervous at first because there were loads of them and they all attacked me. But I knew I could do it. I fought my way through the elemental guards, freezing them with my ice blast, burning them with my fire breath, and blowing them away with my whirlwind attack. It took a while to get through all of them, but in the end, I managed. Phew, all that fighting made me hungry. Magnus must be anticipating me because he really did gather all the remaining elementals to guard his base. Now, let me find him. On day 100, I headed into Magnus's base to finally complete my quest. He was sitting on a throne, waiting for me. I escaped your trap. So I see. I had a feeling you might. It doesn't matter. You're going to lose. I don't think I am. See, there's something you don't get about the elements. They require balance. They're equal. None of them are better than the others. Elements don't have lords. They're all equal and work together. Foolish words from a foolish shark. No more talking. Let's fight. He didn't have to tell me twice. He didn't even have to tell me once. I was already getting my sword ready. I used my dirt ability to hopefully trap him, but he dodged it. He came back at me with an attack, but I dodged it and attacked again. All of a sudden, Magnus started shaking and growing. He evolved into a bigger, stronger version of himself right before my eyes. Uh-oh, I've got to step up my game. Ice time! I used my ice ability to freeze Magnus so he wouldn't have a chance to hit me with his new evolved strength. This gave me just enough time to use all the other elements back to back. Earth, fire, air. With all my powers combined, I finally defeated Magnus. It's over. Now we can all coexist in peace again.